Okay, so good morning. So I think we can, um, if uh, you all are ready, maybe uh, maybe we can start. So uh, good morning, everybody. So today, um, special day. So right uh, today is um, uh, Professor Remo Ruffini's birthday. Uh, so I'd like to, to personally congratulate him for, for for this uh, for all his uh, career of success and uh, it's very nice to see all all of you online here um, to celebrate um, this day um, and I, actually Professor Rufili was online before I see I can uh, see him I even uh, hear his voice so uh, I hope he's uh, still uh, still around um, so um, maybe we can start to. In the program, I have as a first of speaker, um, uh, Professor Young Hyok Shim, or maybe there is a, a, a message from him, the president of Sogan University. Uh, 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 unfortunately, he cannot join with this conference because uh, conflict with his schedule. So he asked me to send uh, Sorry, one, I, can, because... I can hear you. So cannot, can you hear me? I, I, I don't yes. hear you, um, Young. Anyone can hear you, hear me? Yes, we can. Yes, yes, we, can yes. we can hear you. Okay. Okay. Hello, hello, Remo. Hello, hello. Uh, oh, hello, Remo. Dim Dimitris, I see you very well. Yeah. And, well uh, I, I, am so I don't happy. see you, but I, I hope you become. <laughs> yes, uh, I. Very fast, uh, uh, better health than before. And uh, uh, it's very nice to see you and uh, all the colleagues from Young and uh, Sample Kim and oh. Org, of course. I will be following all the time. And, um, and tomorrow afternoon, I will be out. Therefore, very likely, I will, have the I will make the conclusion in Villarat. Mm -hmm. And this is a great news. And the referral is Rebo. a good one. Hello? Hello, happy birthday, Rebo. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Today Ashka. is your birthday, actually. Thank you, thank you. It's so nice to have so many friends around, and especially Dimitrius, which uh, I'm so happy to see him and so well. And uh, by tomorrow afternoon, you will see me, and I am better than before. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we can proceed then. Yes, Professor, I think we can proceed. Uh, is also Professor Mimosa is, is online now too. Um, okay, so I don't know if there, uh, anybody uh, was uh, young that was ready, I think, before. Yes, okay. Uh, oh, now we can hear you. Okay, thank you. Uh, unfortunately, the president, uh, Father Luke Sim, cannot join this conference because uh, with conflict with his uh, schedule. And, and he asked me to send a warm regards, warm congratulations to Professor Remarupini. Okay, then uh, can I start the sharing? Okay. I will show my presentation. Can you see my screen? Yes, yes we can. Okay, mm -hmm. thank you. Okay, uh, this is a very deep uh, memory. Uh, oh, sorry, this, not this one. Okay. 
Yes, this is a memory, my memory with Professor Raymond Rupin. So I worked with Professor Raymond Rupin about the degenerate neutrino when I arrived to Rome. It's 1989. It was the first time I come out abroad from Korea. So it was a very, for me, it's a very strange experience. And uh, at that time, also nowadays, I, I'm not confront the English speaker. So it is very difficult for me to communicate uh, some other people at that time. And uh, okay, this is the first uh, building. It's a famous uh, physical Guglielmo Marconi edificio. It's, uh, at the uh, first floor of this uh, building is uh, I visit the first time the Lemos office. I said uh, February of 1989. It's, uh, I, I felt because it's uh, my trip from Korea to Rome, uh, it took about 22 hours from uh, via Hong Kong and uh, Taipei and then go to the wrong, so it took 22 long journeys. So it was, I was very tired at that time. And then this is the work uh, we've done with Professor Remo Rupini. And uh, it is the modified Gawano code to simulate some cosmological evolution of the degenerate neutrino uh, to take uh, some abundance of so, uh, the uh, helium or lithium or something like that. And at that time, it was the, my first VMS C code program. And uh, uh, fortunately, it was succeeded to modify the program and to run uh, it's a cluster of the universe drone and uh, it published in the Astron and the Astro Journal. It's uh, 90, 1990. Okay. Of course, after that, uh, we have uh, some uh, works, but uh, not so much <laughs> with Professor Pin. And uh, the, my contribution to uh, collaboration with uh, Rupini is the main, the maintaining the Italian Korean symposium from 1987. So it, the last one was uh, held in 2021, last year. Sakang University and the Gunsan National University with the help of Shikesta and the Gunsan University. It, uh, it already more than 30 years. So 17th one was the last one, it's 34 years. And you can see very young people around there. So at that time, I was uh, just uh, some, uh, just a graduate student. And then I graduated 89 and uh, moved to the University of Group G9. And that is the start of my uh, experience with uh, for the ceremony. And this is a list of all uh, Italian Korean meetings up to now, last year. And this is a picture is just the third Italian Korean meeting, just at the uh, Marshall Grossman, sixth Marshall Grossman meeting held at the Kyoto in 1991. And uh, I come back. To Korea is uh, 1993 uh, to work on Inje University, and I'm still working in the university. And also, I am getting older here, and uh, I will be retired within four years. So it's a uh, so time passed very fast. It's more than 30 years. <clears throat> and also, this is a 2002. 60th birthday of Professor Raymond Rupin. You can see uh, many people around him. And also, I, will, I just uh, commented to their special guest from North Korea, the two person. Uh, you can see just uh, near Professor Belinsky. And uh, after that, uh, I made some communication with them, but uh, after that, there, there are no connections later anymore. Okay, and we finally, I want to have uh, send a very big congratulation to Ace Birthday, Professor Rupini. Auguri tanti. 
Tanti auguri, professore. Gra grazie. Grazie molto, Young, e grazie. E grazie anche per le belle foto che hai mostrato. E' stato molto bello continuare per così tanti anni e abbiamo il 21 italo-coreano meeting. Thank you again, and thank you, and give my best regard to, to the rector. Okay, thank you. Uh, maybe next speaker is Professor Sang Kyo Kim. Olge? Yes. Uh, now, Do I share the screen? Can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can hear you very well. Yeah, then... I can now, see your screen. Can you uh, see my screen? Yes. Yes. All right, all right. Um, now I let's see. see. I can hear uh, and uh, read the congratulations on your <laughs> early birthday. Okay. Yeah. Now, for screen. Yes, okay. All right. Yes. Lemo, yeah, congratulations on your 80th birthday. Thank you. In Asia, we use this Chinese character that, that is San, uh, San Su, uh, designated for 80th birthday. Uh, people of this age, very special character. And I also wish you good health and good health. All right, uh, today I'll talk about a uh, tragic black hole uh, related to uh, Lemo's proposal for GRB. So the title is Lemo Lupini and the tragic black hole. Actually now I'm associated to a strong ultra intense laser center in Korea, just because I'm interested in uh, laboratory astrophysics combining uh, strong field QED with yeah, possible astrophysics uh, application. <clears throat> Actually my journey of charged black hole began uh, when I attended a workshop on electrodynamics and magnetohydrodynamics around the black hole 99, 99 uh, 90 in Pescara. So more than uh, 23 years ago, uh, ago. That was very interesting and attractive uh, talks and that inspired my uh, physical curiosity. So that is the, uh, the occasion and uh, the event where I uh, began working on a uh, charged black hole. Uh, today I'll talk about uh, Schinger effect uh, from charged black hole, then uh, briefly explain about uh, Lemo and his collaborator, uh, Thibaut Damo, about uh, GRB model, then uh, recent work on theoretical work on Schinger effect uh, from quantum field theory in the background of a child black hole. And I uh, briefly talk about the physical processes for charged accretion for black hole or astrophysical object, how astrophysical object uh, can accumulate net charges. That is a, a challenge. Uh, in the research involving charged black hole or astrophysical uh, object. Finally, if I have time, uh, probably not, then I'm going to advance some idea about laboratory astrophysics. That is the issue and the topic I'm really interested in. Now, let me uh, briefly explain about what we mean by uh, uh, Schinger effect. Actually, that is uh, charged pair production by electric field. There is a very nice review article by Lemo and uh, Gregory and uh, Shisheng that uh, published in uh, Physics Report uh, 2010. That is one of the highly cited review article 
uh, about these uh, charged black hole things and uh, astrophysical uh, astrophysics involving strong electromagnetic field. So without electric field, actually, we have the vacuum separated by mass gap. One is uh, positive mass, the other is negative mass for uh, horse and type particle. Now, just imagine uh, turning on a strong electric field then actually because of electrostatic uh, potential from uniform electric field, then this mass gap tilted. So the, the antiparticle from Dirac C can quantum mechanical tunnel through this mass gap without the electric field, just, just because there is no chance. Uh, probability is mathematically zero. However, when you turn on strong electric field, then actually the particle from the Dirac C can quantum mechanical tunnel to a uh, positive balanced state. So that is the uh, real electron and the positron, for instance, wall, particle, anti-particle. And the mean number actually uh, is given by a very simple formula that, that is famous Schinger formula that is lovely mass square over charge times uh, field strength of electric field. Now, actually, uh, you may wonder when uh, we consider charged, part, uh, charged black hole just because black hole emit Hawking radiation. Now, uh, because of the charging of a charged black hole, then on the horizon, actually, we have electric field too. So we have both mechanism. One is the, the famous Hawking uh, radiation. The other is Schinger uh, emission. Uh, uh, due to strong electric field from charged black hole. Actually, these two formula uh, on the left hand side and right hand side, uh, right hand side actually uh, compare uh, these two emission, famous emission mechanism uh, via Hawking or via Schinger. Schinger mechanism, then this is the famous Hawking radiation formula, Hawking radiation, Hawking formula. And on the other hand, now, as I explained, uh, using very simple computation of uniform electric field, now the, the mean number of uh, charged pair uh, creation uh, from electric field that is given by mass over effective temperature. Now, this effective temperature, uh, uh, so-called Schinger temperature, that is the acceleration of 2 pi times 2. Acceleration of 2 pi, that is on the temperature. Now, to come from uh, purely ultra relativistic effect of quantum field theory uh, in uh, QED. So, that is a difference. Now, this is the uh, basic concept about uh, uh, Schinger effect. Now, let me uh, explain about, uh, briefly explain and uh, summarize the history of Schinger effect in charged black hole actually, um, 1974, Jaume and Carter and Gary Gibbons. And one year later, uh, Thibaut Damo and Lemo Lupini uh, published two uh, papers, one in physical review letter, the other in uh, physical review D. Actually, that is the Kahneman black hole and the QED effect. He, they studied uh, QED effect uh, due to uh, Schinger effect production. So charged black hole, rotating charged black hole, that is Kahneman black hole, actually emit uh, charged pair, uh, discharge of the charged black uh, charges of black hole uh, due to Schinger effect pair creation. That is different from Hawking radiation. Now. Uh, Lemo and uh, uh, his group and his collaborator have elaborated uh, this concept to propose kind of diode sphere model for uh, GRB, gamma ray burst. And for rotating core Newman black hole, actually, 
that is dietal torus model, then there are many uh, the studies, theoretical aspect of uh, charged black hole, uh, quantum field theoretical aspect of charged black hole, uh, including uh, Don Page and myself, and also uh, Lemo and Gregory and Shi Sheng published very uh, beautiful review article in physics report that, that is uh, year, year 2010. Then uh, mostly I just work on uh, quantum field theoretical aspect of charged black hole, including uh, Hawking radiation and uh, Schinger effect. So even this year, uh, one article will be published soon in uh, physical DVD. Now, uh, let me uh, briefly summarize uh, what uh, Lemo and uh, Dimitrios uh, proposed uh, 71. Actually, that is that rotating black hole has irreducible mass and energy. And beyond of that, then black hole can uh, emit and energy. That means uh, black hole, one can, some physical mechanism can extract energy from this rotate, rotating black hole. That is uh, their idea. And according to their conclusion, uh, formula then extremal black hole Elitist mass uh, that account for black hole entropy, that is 71%. This means that uh, 20 is 29% uh, black hole mass uh, due to rotational energy can be ex extractable, can be extracted. So for solar mass, that is equivalent to 10 to the 63 uh, electron volt. And uh, 1 billion solar mass uh, black hole actually that is 10 to 74 electron volt huge so uh, from the energy uh, energy uh, budget then uh, one may think about the uh, GRB that is actually what uh, Tibor and the Lemo proposed uh, years later so uh, how to extract energy from uh, rotating black hole? The famous classical mechanism is Penrose process. Uh, the other is a Hawking radiation, but for astrophysical size black hole, actually Hawking radiation is really exponentially suppressed, too tiny. On the other hand, when uh, black, hole, black holes have a, uh, charges, then the electromagnetic field uh, due to this charged black hole can ignite heat effect. That is the pair production. That is the enormous uh, production of a charged pair uh, uh, due to Schinger effect. Actually, Lemo and uh, uh, his collaborator uh, for many years, for several decades, uh, elaborated this concept for GRD. Uh, on the other hand, Brentford and Junaya uh, uh, 1977, uh, they use a, a little bit different concept, a same QED process that actually extract energy from rotating black hole. So that is the, uh, I wish to, I want to explain about what Lemo uh, the studied in 70s. This is the summary, actually, summary of the paper that published in uh, Physical Review Letter 75 and uh, another paper in PRD. But actually, uh, there are two. Uh, in Cornelian Black Hole, actually, it has angular momentum and electric charge as well as mass of the black hole. So cosmic censorship uh, require that uh, angular momentum square plus charge square must be less than or equal to m square. So we have this uh, limit from cosmic censorship. On the other hand, as I explained uh, uh, before, just because of char charges, now charged black hole can have electric field. 
we call that then just because of electric field. Now we have a uh, pair creation of a charge, uh, pair creation of charges. So we call that vacuum polarization effect. So this <laughs> summarized actually what, how much energy and uh, the electric field strength in uh, uh, Gaussian unit, the first column. And uh, the first column actually that is a, a mass of irreducible mass of black hole in solar, uh, solar mass unit. Now the uh, last column actually that is the maximum energy that can be ex extracted in bulk. So uh, for one solar mass is still huge, actually something like uh, 10 to the 40 Gauss. But when, when the mass of black hole increase, then actually maximal energy increase too. So 100 mass of solar mass actually 10 to the uh, 40, uh, uh, 56 from the cosmic censorship. However, from vacuum polarization effect, that is uh, 10 to the 46. Now just imagine, uh, for instance, uh, Sagittarius A that has four million solar mass, uh, solar mass uh, black hole, then uh, the energy that, that is something like 10 to the 60 or 58, that is huge really huge energy that can be extracted from uh, such a charged black hole. Now, the 100 million uh, solar mass black hole then 10 to the 62, so huge. Now, question is how to extract, which physical mechanism extract? And on another open question is how astrophysical object, including black hole, can accumulate net charges, accredit net charges. So I'll uh, explain about that, briefly explain about that uh, in, in a few minutes, then I'll conclude. This is the concept actually uh, by the sphere. Uh, Lemo and uh, his collaborator uh, proposed as GLB model, now charged black hole, just because uh, when the black hole, uh, in, as I explained in the previous uh, table, then when the black hole mass is uh, sufficiently large in solar mass unit, then actually it can have a sufficient charge that uh, trigger, trigger kind of a, uh, enormous production of electron positive mm -hmm. pair or charged pair. So, mm -hmm that can be used for uh, the kind of central engine for GRB. That is my understanding of uh, Lemos uh, GRB model. Now more elaborated version come from rotating uh, charged black hole, but uh, no time for that. And more elaboration, that is the binary driven hypernova, actually that involved this uh, rotating charged black hole thing, but I do not have time. So now let me uh, briefly explain about uh, these two concepts. One is how black hole can emit charged black hole. Uh, the, uh, the prominent uh, feature of this Schinger effect come from when the black hole become extremal, that charge equal to uh, mass. Then Hawking radiation, just because of extremal, uh, the uh, condition of black hole, then Hawking temperature uh, vanishes were uh, very tiny, extremely tiny, then Hawking radiation uh, is exponentially suppressed. So now still, just because of uh, electric field on the horizon, now we have a Schinger effect. So the concept to explain uh, this uh, Schinger effect from near extremal or extremal charged black hole, that is the DC effect of temperature, unknown temperature of charge acceleration. And we have another term actually that come from near the horizon of a black hole actually 
uh, for near extremal one or extremal ones, then that is ADS uh, space structure near the horizon geometry. That is the reason why we have curvature here. Now, uh, this single formula, this is a universal formula for Schinger effect for, from near extremal uh, charged black hole, rotating or non-rotating. Uh, so actually we have uh, this Schinger effect from near horizon geometry of extremal black hole, that is ADS2. On the other hand, for near extremal black hole actually, uh, not only uh, the ADS uh, geometry, but also we have Lindler uh, uh, space type uh, impact that is due to tiny, tiny Hawking temperature. So uh, taking into account all these impact uh, that these are given by this, this single formula, uh, unified formula for impact temperature, that is nothing but acceleration of charge on the horizon. And uh, the black hole uh, curvature impact uh, due to near horizon geometry rate is two. So uh, square root of unknown temperature square and two dimensional uh, uh, ADS geometry of A phi square. So this is the effect of temperature. There is kind of some impact of mass and other thing, but that is only technical point. So I not explain that. Now uh, I don't. Now I do not have time to explain about uh, to advance laboratory sort of physics. But now let me. Uh, spend a couple of minutes uh, to explain about processes for charge operation, how astrophysical size, uh, astrophysical object, including black hole, can accredit charges. Actually, just because uh, this is a kind of a, uh, uh, yeah, fundamental issue of uh, gravitational attraction and uh, huge electrostatic repulsion. So enormous disparity between these two forces uh, for charged particle actually predict that astrophysical object from direct gravitational collapses are charged neutral. That is a kind of a uh, con against a uh, charged astrophysical black hole. Uh, on the other hand, uh, taking into account more uh, the physical processes, more physical scenario such as the kind of plasma, the plasma of protons and electrons uh, before uh, collapsing to uh, astrophysical size black hole or astrophysical object. Actually, just because of mass difference between protons and the electron, then uh, the employing multi-component charged fluid model, then using this concept, uh, collapse of plasma of uh, proton and electron, then actually it predicts that the, this gravitational collapse uh, astrophysical object or black hole from this plasma of ions then can accumulate charge in that charge up to 100 coulomb per each solar mass. So large solar mass can operate it more. However, uh, actually this concept come from Bell and the Harrison 78. They uh, employed multi-component charge fluid model to explain about a uh, charged astrophysical object, but uh, when we have a uh, magnet field surrounding our uh, astrophysical object, including black hole, then this magnetic field assist uh, operation of uh, charges into collapsed object, uh, making black hole uh, charged. That is a kind of a charge selective operation procedure. So, this is two stage scenario. Uh, gravitational collapse to form black hole and the surrounding uh, plasma with a magnetic field that 
assist uh, charge oppression. Then we have uh, charge black hole. Another theoretical model of a charge uh, object that is uh, phase transition, such as electric phase transition in the early universe, or in the uh, grand unified theory, then we have many charges. So <laughs> black hole can have many charges. So I spend most of the time, so probably better for me to uh, conclude, uh, skip all this, um, uh, jump into the conclusion. Now, rotating black hole surrounded by charged uh, plasma and uh, generated uh, the electric field generated from the plasma actually then may provide a central engine for GRB that is a uh, Blanford Janaya uh, GRB model. On the other hand, uh, diode torus model or sphere model from charged black hole. That is, uh, there is a difference between that uh, uh, Blanford Janaya model assume the black hole, rotating black hole with uh, charged plasma and uh, electromagnetic field generated by uh, this charged plasma. Uh, however, uh, Lemo and uh, uh, his group's model for GRB, actually that is charged black hole, charged black hole, that uh, provide a mechanism for GRB, that is a central engine for GRB uh, via Schwinger effect. So actually there is question about the how black hole accredit charges. That is an open question that I explained already. And magnetic field uh, from surrounding plasma, they may, uh, be, uh, they may give a very physical scenario for uh, this charged uh, black hole. Now, uh, uh, from purely theoretical site, uh, theoretical viewpoint, we have quite a challenging question about the, just because Schinger effect is a purely quid effect. Now, uh, to have theoretical understanding for this GRB, uh, just based on uh, Schinger effect, that require a unified picture of QED in general relativity. That is unknown. Also, uh, we, we may have uh, magnetized QED plasmas surrounding rotating black hole. That is also unknown. So uh, from this viewpoint, we have very interesting theoretical challenges how to have correct model, including QED in that is how to unify general relativity with QED. Now, I, uh, I don't have time to uh, propose or advance laboratory astrophysics, but uh, when COVID-19 will be over, then I expect we have a face-to-face -face meeting and there I'll talk about laboratory astrophysics. So, yeah, better for me to uh, stop here. Now, once again, I'd like to congratulate uh, Lemo, uh, Professor Lemo Lupini for his 80th birthday. Happy birthday, Lemo. Thank you, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And uh, let me just say, how impressive has been uh, your uh, historical uh, reconstruction. If, uh, <clears throat> if I can uh, make uh, some comments, uh, one of the most important meeting I had in my life was uh, the meeting with Heisenberg. Oh, I see, I and, see. And uh, in that meeting, we, uh, I went to see him just after introducing the black hole. Oh, and, and 
and uh, I spoke with Heisenberg, was very surprising, small with the H bar on his tie in gold. And, uh, uh, and, um, and we spoke and I, I told him, I understand that you were, you were not ever interested in astrophysics. You have been interested in turbulence, everything, but not in astrophysics. And the time has come, believe me, that we can see the Heisenberg Euler process in astrophysics. And he was so excited about this. He was even planning, we met again uh, in United States and he was planning to come to, uh, to the uh, 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 meeting uh, in Varenna, but unfortunately, he had not the possibility because he was sick. But anyway, that meeting was very important because it triggered that the key quantity, okay, you must have a plus e minus creating by critical field. And uh, his support was great. And he was uh, going to come to become an astrophysicist. But uh, after this, I spoke with Thibault and so forth, and we made the first example of how to use the vacuum polarization in order to explain the energetic of GRB. This has been a fantastic work you mentioned, because the energetic came out correct even before we knew that GRB were at cosmological distance. In other words, from first principle, uh, it was possible to know that they were in cosmological, uh, uh, cosmological, not local, because the energy was the one of uh, a black hole, 10 to the 54 hertz. And this has been the second step. But at that moment, the challenge start because in America, in US, a lot of people were laughing Ruffini speaks about the charge black holes. And okay, I, I decided to say, let, me, let them laugh. But it's clear that the mechanism was necessary. And I used the charge as a toy. And one day I said, one day, we will understand why the charge appears. But let us understand if you have a charge over critical, how you can polarize the vacuum and generate e plus e minus. This was the fantastic work done by Livermore, uh, by, uh, um, uh, by the, the, uh, uh, the, the collaboration with Livermore, in which the plus e minus plasma self accelerate and is the mechanism for the gamma ray burst. But the, you mentioned that. But the key point is how you create the charge. And if you go back to your picture and you show a moment to the picture, uh, the figure about the latest work we have done, the one, uh, uh, can you go back to your uh, slides a moment? Yes, yes. The, uh, the, the, the most recent one, the one about the world solution. And there has been the greatest result of the last, uh, uh, of the last- Ah, uh, you mean uh, this one? No, 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 no. The image where you show, the image, our image where you show- oh, Okay, okay, okay. Where uh, you, you show, are this one or next oh, before, one? Before, 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 before. No, after, okay. after. Okay, this one, this one. Binary driven hypernova. The one binary driven hypernova, two, uh, two uh, later, two later. Okay, this okay. one, splendid. Uh -huh. And what it ca came out finally is that the charge is due to an interaction between the Kerr metric and the magnetic field. There is no charge. There is an effective charge, which is just a byproduct of the Kerr rotation and the magnetic field. And the byproduct of the two gives a charge. 
but there is no charge, in fact. And this was the solution and laughing about these people who were laughing. Of course, we were considered an effective charge, but the effective charge is does not, uh, uh, is not present uh, any longer a charge. It's just uh, the rotation of care and the magnetic field, the gravitomagnetic energy and with the magnetic energy, which creates the acceleration. This mm -hmm. is the big discovery of the last 10 years, which we did with Orge and Orge and other people will speak about. But the field now is complete and we can express the energy source of the gamma ray burst thanks to this world paper and I will comment maybe another time about the situation with Walt. Okay, very, very interesting and very exciting. But the point is, uh, you don't need a net charge. You have just need an effective. Okay, okay. okay. Understood, yeah. Yeah, okay. understood your point. Yes, and yes. I think that's it. May, may I interrupt you, the two of you? For this extraordinary, interesting and passionate discussion about very important topics, but I think we have to proceed because we still have another uh, uh, speaker. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Thank you, everyone. Huh? Thank, thank you, thank you everyone. Thank you, Raymond. You are in full shape. That's great. And, uh, <laughs> and then we, I think we have to go to the next speaker. Thank you. Natalie, tomorrow I will be there in person. Voila. Stefano Scopel is next speaker. So Stefano Scopel is the next speaker. Here no. I am. I will share the screen. Yes. Voila. Thank you. Okay, I hope you see the screen now. Okay. Uh, good uh, morning uh, to you in Italy. Good afternoon to my friends in Korea. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to this uh, meeting. Actually, it is a pleasure and also a honor for me to join the other distinguished participants to this workshop to celebrate the 80th birthday of uh, Remo and to celebrate uh, Professor Rufini's outstanding scientific achievement during his very long career. Uh, actually, today I will just uh, make a few remarks. Also, we are running late of time uh, from South Korea, from downtown Seoul. Uh, as uh, since I am in charge of uh, running the Center for Quantum Space Time in Sogang University, uh, that uh, is going to collaborate with uh, uh, Ikronet in, uh, I hope, uh, in the future, and has collaborated in the past. In particular, I would like also, in my uh, few remarks, to appreciate uh, Professor Rufini's continuous and tireless efforts to improve the scientific relations between Italy and uh, Korea, not only in the past, but also at present time, as uh, um, I had the opportunity also to have many conversations with uh, Remo, who is uh, strongly uh, pushing uh, toward uh, improving the relations between Italy and Korea. Um, so, um, uh, of course, as uh, uh, the speakers that uh, talked before me, uh, uh, in particular, uh, Yohan and, uh, and uh, um, uh, Pyo, uh, the collaboration between uh, Korea and Professor Ruffini has been running for a very long time. Uh, and uh, uh, one of it, the most important parts has been the running for 35 years of the Italy-Korean Symposium that as probably most of you know, is uh, uh, held uh, every two years alternating between Italy and Korea. And last year, uh, uh, CQUEST, uh, the, our center, together with Gonzan University, uh, uh, um, uh, and of course, uh, ICRANET uh, organized uh, the 17th Italy-Korean Symposium in Gonzan. Uh, unfortunately, due to the uh, to the pandemics, uh, the Italian side could only uh, join uh, through Zoom, but I also have a very good memory of this meeting because uh, it was from the Korean side, it was uh, uh, in sight, it was uh, in presence, and it was uh, one of the first meetings where we could uh, meet uh, uh, our friends uh, after the pandemics. Uh, I would like to draw your attentions to the fact that now we are preparing the proceedings and uh, 
that will be published on the AIP conference uh, uh, proceeding series. The proceedings will be available uh, without the need of subscription for a year uh, after the publication. And so it will be a very good opportunity to, for everybody to have access to uh, Professor Ruffini's uh, uh, impressive submission. He submitted a, a very impressive document uh, that is a recollection of 50 years of history of the black hole from its introduction to present. So this is not only a scientific uh, recollection, but it's a very entertaining reading about uh, how the relation between uh, Professor Ruffini and Korea, and also Italy and Korea, the scientific relations could grow and develop uh, during the years. Um, but uh, uh, usually when you celebrate an 80th uh, uh, birthday, you focus upon the past, but I don't think this is the case of Professor Ruffini. Remo is focused to, to the future. And uh, indeed, uh, uh, no later than two months ago, uh, we signed a cooperation protocol between our center, Sequest, uh, and, uh, and uh, Ecranet. In particular, Sequest uh, uh, is in charge of monitoring and supervising the implementation of the protocol on behalf of Sogam University and also Professor Shim, the president of Sogam University, signed uh, the protocol. Of course, we have to, to work on how to fill it up. We have to prepare working plans. And uh, there are many ideas. Uh, I had uh, several opportunities to discuss uh, with Remo, who has, uh, is full of ideas. Uh, uh, really, he wants to uh, improve relations. And I think uh, that uh, uh, we really have, uh, it is a good opportunity. Of course, in order to do that, we need uh, uh, funding. Uh, this is the point within the dedicated fund. And so I think that also uh, in Korea, there is an ongoing discussion uh, among the different uh, institutions on how to uh, find a critical mass. Sequest is not big enough to apply for, uh, for funding that could, for instance, uh, uh, allow us to uh, have common PhD programs. Uh, the, uh, 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 Ecronet is running uh, many, uh, several uh, uh, PhD programs with uh, uh, external institutions, including many in Asia. And so, of course, uh, especially in, in, in the longer run, uh, we can hope also to have something like this with Sogang University. But the crucial point is uh, funding. And uh, uh, as a Professor, as Ramos suggested many times, uh, 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 probably the most straightforward way to obtain this funding would be for Korea to join uh, Ecronet as a member. Okay, there is, of course, we, reach, we need to reach consensus and the critical mass. But however, in the meantime, uh, the protocol is already active. And with, of course, the, the funding which is available now, uh, so with the uh, uh, ordinary funding, we can still, uh, 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 from Sequest, we can think uh, uh, to, uh, pro to, uh, to um, uh, to support joint scientific, scientific activities. Uh, Sequest will be funded until 2029, and I can tell you that it will be very nice to uh, continue to support the Italy-Korean uh, uh, um, symposium during this time. Uh, also, uh, uh, again, using ordinary funding, we can have uh, uh, short and medium, uh, uh, the exchange of short and medium visitors between our two institutions. Uh, okay, I will just conclude, uh, since Sequest is in the, uh, at the crossroad, let's say, uh, between, it could be uh, through this uh, cooperation protocol between Ecronet and Korea and the other, also the other Korean institutions, say a few words about our center. Our center is called the Center for Quantum Space Time in Sogang University. And uh, uh, it is, uh, uh, in, in a nutshell, is uh, constituted of about 20 uh, people, including four uh, faculties of physics department. We work in several areas, including black hole physics, uh, uh, astroparticle phenomenology, and uh, the phenomenology and uh, numerical and analytical approaches of in effective theory of gravity and cosmology. Uh, actually, cosmology is at the crossroad, is at the overlapping between the interest of all our members and our eventual goal, our long-term goal, is to uh, develop interdisciplinary inter approach. 
So uh, I would just uh, like to say that uh, it would be nice if also some uh, members of Ecranet could uh, visit us and join in this, uh, in this effort. Okay, so uh, 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 Professor Inyong Wan, who speaks excellent Italian, uh, told uh, uh, Remo uh, happy birthday in Italian with my much, much poorer Korean. Uh, let me tell you uh, happy birthday in Korean. Senghil Juka Hamnida. See you. I really do hope that uh, many people from Korea will uh, be able to uh, participate, to join the 18th Italy Korean Symposium in Italy next year in presence. Let's cross our fingers and uh, I can stop here. Thank you. Thank, Thank you very much. Uh, thank, you, thank you very much, uh, Stefano, and let's look uh, uh, over and uh, uh, in uh, Ad Maiora, the poet of Pescara used to say, Ad Maiora, to greater and greater. Ad, ad Maiora, Ad Astra. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much. So it's time now to proceed uh, to uh, Thibaut Damou. Are you online, Thibaut? Can you hear us? Yes, yes. Excellent. Ah, bonjour, Thibaut. Bonjour, Nathalie. Should I share screen now? Uh, yes. Can I? Yes, please do. We are happy to have you with us. OK, so let us uh, play the slideshow. OK, can you see uh, my yes, screen? We, we can see very well. Mm -hmm. okay. Good, let me close this. Okay, so it is a great pleasure and honor to talk and celebrate Remo's uh, 80th birthday. And I want to, oops, yes. I, I'm going to talk about uh, binary pulsars. Binary pulsars were- uh, Tibu, did... can you hear us? Sorry? Tibu, can you hear us? Yes. Can you hear us? Okay. I can hear. I can hear you. Can you hear me too? Because the connection is not safe. Well, oh. uh, it comes and goes sometimes. But now we, we can hear you. So please go on. Okay. So um, the first binary pulsar discovered by Hulse and Taylor was discovered in the summer of 1974. The first announcement was done in October 1974. And this was important for me because I was a 23-year-old postdoc who has just arrived in September in Princeton. And one day, Remo told me, OK, let's go to the lunch uh, at the Institute for Advanced Study organized by Bacal to hear the news. And during this lunch in October, they announced uh, the discovery of the binary pulsar. And immediately with Remo, we understood that there was uh, here something quite interesting for probing uh, general relativity and relativistic astrophysics. Uh, the month after, we, we went to Stanford to visit uh, Francis Everett and the Gravity Probe B team, and which means that we, uh, we were thinking about a gyroscope because as you all know, Gravity Pro B uh, tests the spin orbit and spin-spin coupling of a gyroscope going in an orbit around the earth. And when we came back to, to Princeton with uh, Remo, we, uh, we worked and uh, wrote uh, what, what was going to be the first paper published in my career, uh, which was a, a short note to the compte rendu of the Academy of Sciences, uh, oops, which was uh, entitled on uh, certain new uh, verifications or tests of general relativity made possible by the discovery of a binary pulsar in which we discuss several possible uh, tests uh, or probes of general relativity, but the, 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 the newest uh, ID in this paper, which by the way, was the only paper on the binary pulsar which was published in 1974, because we sent it to Dishnerovitz, who immediately had it published in the Compte Rendu of the Academy of Sciences in France. So the newest, 
idea in, in this paper was um, to discuss the possibility, I mean, to have the idea inspired by uh, our visit to Stanford and Gravity Pro B, that after all, as you can see uh, down there, uh, a, a pulsar is, is a gyroscope, okay? And a, a gyroscope, uh, when it is submitted to external forces, including gravitational forces, uh, tends to process, okay? Uh, there are several uh, motions, but the most important was the precession and the geometry of the precession of pulsars can be uh, complicated because there is the magnetic axis, there is the emission axis, and there is the, the rotation axis. But, uh, but the, the basic idea here was that this would allow by monitoring the, the pulse shape over several years, we were saying that um, there could be a modification of the pulse shape and which is astrophysically important because it allows to observe the emission process of a pulsar at varying angles. And also uh, with a certain frequency that we approximately uh, computed. And also we predicted that as um, a pulsar is emitting a, a beam, uh, if this beam is precessing in space, it, it can happen to disappear from view from the earth. And then we said uh, at the end uh, that the, the, the pulsar signal could uh, disappear. Okay, so this was one of the predictions about the physics of relativistic effects in, in binary pulsars. And this effect, the spin orbit precession, or what is called often in general relativity, the geodetic precession, because the the four vector describing uh, the spin vector in space-time is actually geodetically uh, parallelly uh, propagated, okay? This thing was first observed with uh, full uh, clarity by uh, Michael Kramer in 1998, and, and then fully uh, confirmed uh, by Weisberg and Taylor, and has been quite uh, important for actually mapping the uh, indeed, as we were saying, mapping the emission region of the pulsar because it um, the the line of sight is cutting through different regions as time passes. Okay, so the point I, I want to say here is that this effect has been seen. Okay, so twenty years after uh, what we had uh, said here, in in quite a few pulsars, not only uh, as indicated here, the first. A binary pulsar, PSR 1913 plus 16, but also 1534 plus 12, 1141, and uh, quite importantly, the double um, binary pulsar, uh, which was later discovered. And in the case for several pulsars, uh, it has been seen that indeed the beam uh, disappeared from view from the Earth, for instance in the double system uh, J0737-3039, uh, where it's a double pulsar with two pulsars A and B, but the second pulsar B disappeared in March 2008 and is expected to reappear around 2035. And concerning the first binary pulsar, it is expected to disappear in uh, something like 10 years or so, or something like this, okay. By the way, in the following, I, am, uh, I will indicate some uh, references, sometimes by name and also some numbers. Uh, all those numbers are taken from a, a review on experimental test of gravitational theory, which you can find on the web uh, from the particle data group uh, among the reviews of the review of particle properties. Okay, now, but, um, but now um, I want to talk about binary pulsars as test beds of uh, gravitational theory, not only as a test of general relativity, but also as test of alternative uh, theories of gravity. And the, the two main points I want to uh, emphasize is that binary pulsars are quite unique in the sense that they allow us to probe 
uh, gravitational physics much beyond the solar system weak field and quasi stationary regime because in binary pulsars you can test the fact that gravity propagates at a finite velocity you can test the gravity the radiation regime radiation effects in in, in gravity and also strong field effects concerning um, gravitational radiation effects, people are often confused because uh, they existed since uh, Peters in 1964, uh, an, an heuristic argument saying in a binary pulsar, you expect uh, since Einstein and Landau Lifshitz that this binary system will lose energy and angular momentum to infinity. And then if you assume heuristically that there is a balance between energy and angular momentum lost at infinity and the mechanical energy and angular momentum of the system, you expect that there will be uh, an effect in the system and therefore a change of the orbital period. And many people say, ah, but this is an indirect uh, indication of gravitational radiation. But actually, as, um, as many people uh, proved and in particular, um, our work uh, with Natalie uh, in the 80s, also together with Louis Bell and, and others, we said, no, uh, if you want really to prove that there are radiative effects in the binary pulsars, you need to talk about a direct observable, the, the change of the orbital period, P dot, okay, of the binary pulsar is a dimensionless number, which is an observational, uh, an observable of the system, and it should come from the retarded interactions between two world lines, okay? You forget about heuristics and loss of energy at infinity between two world lines here in space-time, which represents the two pulsars, uh, gravity propagates, and gravity propagates uh, in a retarded way, which means that the complicated equations of motion that we were the first one to compute to the full accuracy needed to see uh, radiation reaction effects, which means 2.5 pn, I mean V5 over C5 beyond the Newtonian approximation, okay? Which means that the first term in the equations of motion is Newton's law, one over R square. Then there is the famous einstein infeld hoffmann V square over C square correction. The V4 over C4 corrections, which had never been computed exactly before, I mean, correctly, and which was um, derived and proven to be conservative, to derive from an action up to this level. And then the next term, which is V5 over C5, which has uh, nonlinear terms. And, and then from this, it was proven purely from the mechanical motion of the system that indeed, uh, because gravity takes a certain time to propagate at the velocity of gravity between the two objects, there exists a change of the orbital period, which is in, as we will see later, in perfect agreement with various uh, observations in binary pulsars. Okay. Then the next step on which we worked with uh, Natalie, um, people before us had, uh, had already um, said and derived some approximate formulas for connecting the, the theory of gravity and what is observed in binary pulsar timing, which means the timing formula, what is the proper time that you observe tau a on the earth, what is the link between the time of arrival of a binary pulsar signal uh, and the, the number of turns n that the pulsars undergoes uh, connected with the proper time capital T of the, the pulsar itself, it, uh, um, Blanford and Tukolsky had given approximate expression and we derived a full expression, which had the merit also of being uh, very simple because it was uh, really modeled uh, on uh, Keplerian and Newtonian uh, formula. For instance, the relation between the eccentric anomaly U angle uh, and the proper time of the pulsar is just given by the usual Kepler equation. But in these equations, there are various eccentricities that are not the same, like E t, E r, E theta. And then uh, the main point of this formula was to say, 
not only because we have shown that this formula applies not only to general relativity, but to a large class of, of theories of gravity. And therefore, this formula gives a phenomenological way, phenomenological way of extracting several types of parameters from the observation of a binary pulsars. The first type of parameters are parameters of the Keplerian type, like eccentricity and orbital period. But then there is a next layer of parameters called post-Keplerian parameters, like periastron precession measured by the observable quantity K, uh, uh, um, uh, Einstein redshift effect combined with second order Doppler effect parameter gamma, uh, orbital period change, and then two parameters that enter into the Shapiro time delay, delta S. So the idea was that in any given theories of gravity, for instance, in general relativity, you can in principle from one binary pulsars measure uh, here, you know, six parameters, K, gamma, P dot, R, S, and this parameter delta theta. And in, in, in each theory of gravity, like in GR, these six parameters are functions of only two masses that you don't know, the mass of the pulsar and the mass of its companion. But in other theories of gravity, all those formulas are modified and therefore, and they are modified both by radiative effects like P dot, but also by strong field effects, okay? So this is a way to probe uh, the strong gravitational field regime of gravity. Indeed, a pulsar is the ultimate step before a black hole and this quantity, which for a black hole, 2 gm over rc square, where r is the radius of the object. For a black hole, this is one, but for a neutron star, this is uh, close to one in the sense that this is 0 0.4. You know, it's not uh, 10 minus uh, nine for the earth or 10 minus six for the sun. So therefore you have strong field effects. And um, a few years later, we explicitly showed with um, Gilles Esposito Fares that in a very simple uh, class of theories uh, generalizing the, the theory of uh, Jordan, uh, Jordan Firth's uh, theory, which means that you have uh, gravity and a massless scalar field, and then you introduce um, a function which um, says that uh, massive particles do not fall in the, the metric which appears in the Einstein-Hilbert action, but in a different metric. So you respect the equivalence principle, but there is a, a, a difference. You have a coupling of the scalar field to matter via this term. And this coupling is measured by a field dependent coupling constant, which is the logarithmically derivative of this coupling function here with respect to the scalar field. And the idea is that in the solar system, the only quantity that, you, that controls the deviation from generativity is the magnitude of this coupling constant uh, for the value of phi zero far from the system, the vacuum expectation value around the system of the scalar field phi, determined, let us say, by cosmology. And the best solar system limits gives you, tells you that the square of this quantity has to be smaller than 10 minus five, okay? And then you could expect, okay, if I take theories like that, like the Jordan uh, field theory, so-called brands dickey in the States, then if this quantity is very small, all the consequences, uh, all the deviations from general relativity will be very small. But what we have shown is that if you take a slightly more complicated coupling function A, like exponential of minus uh, a certain coefficient of order unity phi square, then uh, even if you constrain your theory by the fact that all solar system tests are, are satisfied, that alpha of phi zero is extremely small and can even be zero actually, or 10 to the minus 120, whatever you want, then in the presence of a neutron star, uh, if uh, this parameter is of order two or four here, then you get uh, a strong deviation, you get that the effective coupling to a neutron star becomes of order unity, and this predicts deviations from general relativity of order unity. So it's an explicit proof that binary pulsars do probe a different regime than the weak field gravity. Now, let us discuss the experimental situation from the point of view of 
uh, binary pulsars uh, data and what they have uh, told us about radiative effects in gravity. First, the, um, the original uh, binary pulsar, as we all know, has been found to be fully compatible with the GR predictions of the change of orbital period, except that actually you need to correct it by galactic effects, but these are conceptually and uh, also uh, quantitatively uh, uh, well enough uh, measured uh, to be able to subtract them. So you use here three observables, the uh, periastron precession, the Einstein uh, time uh, uh, redshift effect gamma and, and P dot, you combine the three uh, observables. So this, yes, let me uh, remind you of the basic point. Uh, I said before, each observable is function of uh, the two unknown masses. So you can use two observables to determine what are the values of the two masses in any theory you have. And then if you insert this answer in a third observable, you have a prediction from any theory. So here from general relativity, you see that this is compatible with one at the two time minus three level from the latest data. But the most impressive test, and it is illustrated here on the right, has been obtained in the double uh, pulsar, PSR J0737. And there is a comprehensive uh, recent paper by Michael Kramer and others. And I assume Michael will talk more uh, in much more detail about it from last December. And I just extracted some numbers from this paper. First, the very impressive test that this P dot test, radiative effects in general activity, if you compare the observed change of the binary pulsar period to the GR predicted one using two observables like here, you find that they agree now at the time minus four level, okay? So in this binary pulsar system, we have a time minus four accuracy uh, proof of the reality of gravitational radiation of the fact that gravity propagates uh, takes a certain time to propagate between the two objects and there are also nonlinear effects. There are also other low eccentricity uh, neutron star white dwarf systems, where if you compare the observed value to the GR value, you could say, ah, here, the, uh, the GR, uh, the observed value is minus 26, the GR value is minus 28. So you say, okay, the agreement is just 10% or so, but what is important is that these are 10 minus 15, extremely small, uh, P dots, extremely so small uh, radiative effects in this system. And if you have anything which can emit uh, uh, like dipole radiation, you know, and dipole radiation is generically emitted in many other theories of gravity, including scalar tensor theories. This is one of the strongest tests of alternative theories of gravity. Now, concerning using binary pulsars to test strong field gravity, without using any radiative effects. I have cited here some of the most uh, important uh, quantitatively and qualitatively tests, which involve actually the parameter that with Natalie we call S. Uh, we had two parameters entering the Shapiro time delay. The Shapiro time delay is the delay, extra delay in the observed time of arrival of a, a binary pulsar um, time uh, by the deflection and the gravitational field of the companion, okay? There are two parameters that we call the range R and the shape S, independent parameters of the Shapiro time delay. And here, the uh, observable value of S uh, compared to the one that you can deduce from periastron precession and uh, Einstein uh, redshift parameter for the pulsar uh, 1534 plus 12 uh, system discovered, if I remember well, by Ingrid Stairs and her group long ago, uh, agrees with general activity at the two time minus three level. But again, the double pulsar uh, gives the most uh, accurate test because for the same observable S, you see it gives an agreement, very impressive agreement at the time minus uh, four level. Um, and also I want to mention that there are other tests of strong field gravity, which are obtained by uh, binary pulsars and they test the 
so-called strong equivalence principle. The strong equivalence principle says that not only ordinary bodies should fall uh, with the same acceleration in an external gravitational field, but even strongly self-gravitating bodies like uh, neutron stars uh, that have, or black holes that have a strong uh, self-gravity should also in GR fall exactly with the same acceleration, but in many theories, uh, other theories of gravity, there is a discrepancy. They don't fall in the same way. And one of the best tests has uh, used the triple uh, system, J0337 plus 15, uh, 1715, which is a hierarchical system where the, the pulsar is in, a, in an orbit uh, around a, a white dwarf, and uh, a rather close orbit. And then uh, far away, there is another uh, object. So you have a triple system. And these two objects fall in the gravitational attraction of the third object. And this test gives uh, an observable limit on the equality of the acceleration of the two bodies at the time minus six level, which is extremely uh, impressive. Uh, to summarize, I want to, to show, I assume Michael Kramer will, will talk in, in full detail about this, about the six confirmations of generativity that have been obtained from the double pulsar, okay? So, uh, so the double pulsar uh, uh, is made of uh, the pulsar A that we still observe and pulsar B, which now, uh, as I said, because of the precession, uh, due to the spin orbit coupling of the spin of pulsar B has now disappeared from view, but it's still, um, this system is as a magnetosphere which makes eclipses. And then this gives a lot of information to determine all the angles in the problem. And because of this one in this system, one could predict what is the GR value of the precession spin of pulsar B, omega B spin. And in this figure, you have uh, seven curves, uh, which represent the, the measurement of seven observable quantities like periastron precession, omega dot, uh, p dot, the, uh, the S parameter, the, the mass ratio, which is a specific thing in this system, the Einstein redshift parameter gamma E, but also omega B and um, each curve uh, is an observable, which is in a given theory, like here GR, a function of the two masses, mass MA and mass MB, and therefore it defines a line. Now, as I said before, if you take the two most uh, accurate measurements, like for instance, uh, omega dot and gamma E, then uh, these two curves intersect somewhere. And this uh, tells you that now this intersection point should be the real physical masses in GR, MA, and MB. And therefore, any other curve should also go, go through, pass exactly through the same point. And therefore, as you have seven curves here, it gives you five tests of generativity. Actually, there is also uh, another curve which is not shown here because it is less accurate. This is the, the last parameter we had predicted with uh, Natalie, the, the shape parameter, the uh, delta theta, which is that the, um, the trajectory in space of a pulsar in generativity is not an ellipse, but it is a deformed ellipse by a certain parameter. It is measured. So uh, at the qualitative level, it is a new test of generativity, but it's not measured with high precision. Uh, precision. But here you see that um, the, the spin precession parameter of uh, B is measured with not a very high accuracy, but is compatible with all the other ones. So it is a, a direct confirmation of spin orbit precession at the quantitative level also. And what is beautiful is that all the other curve really beautifully meet in, in one point with uh, 10 minus four accuracy, as I have discussed. And these things means that if you uh, try now to interpret the, the pulsar uh, observable data in another theory of gravity, then uh, you might see now deviations. And indeed, here in this figure taken from this same parameter of Michael Kramer and, and collaborators, uh, 
um, then you see two theory, um, a theory, a scalar tensor of uh, theory of the type that I discussed before, where the parameter alpha zero, which is the value of alpha uh, for the wave of the scalar field around the solar system is, is small so that in the solar system, you cannot see any deviation. Everything is compatible with all the other tests of gravity that we know. But you see that the various curves do not intersect anymore now. They do not overlap in one point. And also uh, this theory, which has a tensor vector and, and scalar theory of gravity that uh, Jacob Bekenstein uh, proposed to, to try to explain away uh, dark matter, but here it is used as a, as a probe, I mean, as an alternative to general relativity. Uh, this theory with a certain value for its parameter alpha zero is compatible with solar system tests, but is incompatible with binary pulsar data. So you see here directly how uh, the, uh, you test uh, strong field and radiative effects and you can refute uh, theories of gravity. Okay, just to end, I want to, wish you, my dear Remo, uh, a happy birthday. And uh, most importantly, to thank you for your, uh, uh, not only your friendship over so many years, but your guidance into the fascinating world of relativistic astrophysics. Thank you. Thank you, thank you very much, uh, Thibault. Uh, the picture you see is Gelman, uh, Thibault, and, uh, and Kleinert in Villarati. Et maintenant, nous avons plusieurs personnes à Villarati qui vont signer après le Grossman Award, le, le wall a, 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 auprès de tous les autres. I will sign Et, the name of Thibault, but his signature perhaps is already up there. Yes, it should be. It should be. <laughs> it is there. And uh, this is. Uh, please sign next to me. Natalie. Okay. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you, Thibault. And I want to our questions. We have time for a couple of one questions, perhaps. How far can we go in improving this test before uh, astrophysical effects like the finite size of the neutron stars or the, especially the white dwarf in the old samples? Is yes. it, yeah. We begin to dominate. So, did, you, did you hear the question? Yes, yes, I heard the question. From, uh, from Sri, from Sri, Sri, Sri is ask a question. Yes, yes, I understood. So, um, indeed, we have been lucky that up to now, um, these systems have been clean enough. Although, let me tell you an anecdote. I still remember when, uh, back in 1990, I think, I got an email from Joe saying, Thibault, we start having a problem because the observed P dot of the original uh, binary pulsar is now more than two sigma away from the GR prediction. And then we, we thought about it with um, uh, Joe. And then we understood that, uh, okay, it's, it's clear because indeed there are Newtonian effects like the acceleration, the fact that the binary pulsar is in the galaxy is accelerated towards the center. It creates a varying Doppler effect and you must subtract it. But now the problem is that the subtraction of this term is determined only with um, not very high accuracy because it relies, for instance, on the distance to the center of the galaxy, the acceleration in the galaxy. And this now gives a limit on this error bar, which means that in the future, this, pulse, this pulsar has now reached the best it can say. It can never give a test beyond of this, beyond uh, because of this. And there are, um, there are similar uh, things uh, for the future. I mean, for this pulsar, it happens that the correction is smaller and better determined. But indeed, from, uh, for some of the observables, uh, P dot, for others, I think we are far from, uh, from astrophysical effects. Like, uh, uh, although uh, in the recent paper of Michael Kramer, actually an effect which is not noise, like for instance, the uh, effect of the size of the pulsar and the fact that it has an inner shear moment uh, creates a contribution to the periastron precession. 
And now this is something uh, which we can turn from a, a nuisance to an astrophysical tool because it depends on the moment of inertia of the, of the pulsars, of the rotating pulsar. And therefore, if you measure three observable with very high accuracy, you can measure directly the moment of inertia of uh, binary pulsars. This was pointed out first by Gerhard Schaeffer and myself long ago. And for the first time in the double pulsar, uh, one could put limits or show at least that the inertia moment that we are better determined at present by other measurements is compatible with this. And also, I would like to say that something really impressive is, which is uh, discussed at length in the recent paper of Michael Kramer and others on the double pulsar, is that we all know that a pulsar is emitting, is losing energy uh, mainly in the form of electromagnetic waves, a lot of energy, and from Einstein E equals mc square, this energy loss should correspond to a loss of mass. Uh, in general relativity, inertial mass is also gravitating mass, so if you lose mass energy, you should lose gravitating mass, and if you have the mass of the pulsar which changes in time, it gives a contribution to the observed p dot, the change of orbital period, and now this effect hey. is large okay. enough to Thibault. contribute. Yes. Je voudrais beaucoup commencer. Uh, we will uh, follow this. Uh, speak in English, please. And uh, yes, uh, beautiful. Uh, we will hear even from Kramer. But now I have uh, urgency to hear Dimitrius uh, if yes. he's next online. Yes, thank you, Renaud, and thank you, Thibault, for this beautiful talk. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. And uh, we have to discuss with you the program we are carrying out with, uh, with uh, um, uh, 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 on, the, uh, on the consequence of this for gravitational wave um, sure, sure, with Olga okay, and with you, Nathalie. Let's go now to Dimitrios. <laughs> Bye, Thibault. Thank you again. Bye, Nathalie. Uh, Bye, Raymond. He's on the, is to Dimitrios. Can you hear us? Yes. Excellent. Yes. And if we can, could see you or your side. Uh, the... Can we go back to the meeting where I can? So, uh, um, yes. uh, Thibault has to, to stop sharing. Ah, okay. Oh, okay. Right. okay. Okay. Right. Okay, um, well, uh, <laughs> because I, I happen to be not uh, in top shape at the moment. Um, you are not uh, the only one. The <laughs> yes, I, I know, I know Remo, I know Remo, of course, you, I'm not the only one. Uh, and uh, so um, I'd like to say just a few words, some uh, recollections from, uh, uh, what seems to be now almost another lifetime, because this was half more than half a century ago. Uh, well, I remember when uh, Remo first uh, came to Princeton, I was just uh, starting as a graduate student, and uh, he had already done a very important work on uh, boson stars which uh, work actually uh, still uh, remains of current interest. Uh, and then uh, at this point, uh, um, several uh, things happened. Uh, one uh, was um, that uh, uh, John Wheeler, uh, who was the head of the group, uh, he uh, encouraged uh, all the, his students and also the younger colleagues to study the care metric and uh, I am, of course, happy that also Roy Kerr is in this uh, meeting uh, through the internet. And uh, <coughs> we studied the various aspects of this. Uh, now, in fact, uh, um, Remo had, uh, um, was uh, studying uh, the uh, uh, with some other student, Daniel Wilkins, the, the orbits around the Kerr metric, the orbits of test particles, and this led to, to the sculpture which accompanies the, 
the Marshall Grossman Award. Uh, and uh, there were many other topics. Um, one was uh, um, which uh, uh, followed up immediately on uh, Ramos and John Wheeler's article uh, on physics today, which was a landmark article introducing the black hole. So in the wake of this article and uh, in the framework set up uh, there, I started to study uh, the, um, the process of energy extraction, which had been proposed uh, by uh, somewhat informally uh, by uh, Roger Penrose uh, to study it in more detail. And this led to my first uh, paper, which uh, um, Actually, uh, this uh, paper on reversible and irreversible transformations, uh, which uh, uh, had to do only with the the, the care metric uh, in the absence of charge, right? This was just mass and angular momentum. Uh, but uh, they were, um, uh, let's say, gracious to let me publish this paper by myself. Uh, but uh, uh, at the, this was, of course, still in this uh, framework of uh, the Ruffini uh, Wheeler paper uh, article, sorry, which set up the whole framework. And then after that, uh, we immediately, I immediately started collaborating with, uh, uh, with Remo as to what are the further consequences and to understand the more deeply what was happening. And uh, this uh, led uh, to this uh, paper, uh, which uh, had to do with the reversible transformations for a charged black hole. Um, so, uh, all right, that was uh, my part in this, but I should say at the same time, there were uh, many other important developments uh, which uh, set the stage for essentially many of the landmark things that happened in the intervening 50 years in relativistic astrophysics. Uh, one of them was, uh, uh, how can you be sure that a certain compact object is a neutron star or a black hole? Now this was, uh, um, this uh, problem was uh, addressed and answered in uh, a work of, uh, of Remo with uh, another student, Cl um, Clifford uh, Broads. Uh, who established the maximum possible mass for a neutron star. So if uh, you find a compact object with mass larger than this mass, which was about 3.2 solar masses, if I recall, then it has to be a black hole. So this was very uh, definitive and <laughs> a very important contribution. Uh, there were many other contributions. Uh, in particular, I remember that um, uh, in the old uh, Palmer Physical Laboratory, this was before the Jadwin Hall was built, before the new physics building. The old Palmer Laboratory had uh, uh, the advantage that um, uh, it was connected to the fine li library, which was this mathematics library was very beautiful as uh, for its content, but also for the architecture of it. Um, and um, Right, uh, and uh, then uh, so uh, in my um, my office mates when in the, my office in the old Palmer laboratory were um, um, Frank Zerilli and uh, Baylock Hu. Baylock. Frank Zerilli, uh, he made uh, very important uh, contributions to the study of uh, the perturbations of the uh, of the black holes, in particular the gravitational waves, but in uh, uh, gravitational perturbations and so gravitational waves, and in part and a very important uh, uh, work done by Remo with Frank was uh, uh, the study of a, of a mass falling in a black hole. Now, Mass because it was not really a test article of its mass, much smaller than that of the black hole, could not be neglected. And this gives rise to the uh, radiation from the particle. 
And this, uh, on the basis of this uh, study, uh, followed up many other things, in particular also uh, the, forms the basis uh, for the, um, you know, for, for the connection, for the detection of gravitational waves by, uh, by ground-based uh, or even space-based uh, um, interferometers, right? Uh, which, uh, as you know, led to great success. But uh, this uh, first uh, study uh, was, of course, the, <laughs> the first things uh, are always more uh, difficult and important. And this was this uh, work of uh, Frank Zerilli and Remo Ruffini. All right, now Remo, of course, uh, concentrated, um, well, he was endowed with um, uh, uh, had a keen uh, physical insight, but also uh, was uh, very uh, much um, stressed the importance of making uh, connections with uh, astrophysics and observations. So <laughs> not uh, only purely theoretical things, but also how to make such connection with um, astrophysics and observations. My own um, um, uh, sort of, um, uh, let's say, bent of mind uh, was uh, li went more and more into mathematics since that time. Uh, but I should say that, nevertheless, uh, for a large, uh, considerable part of my uh, career, which was mathematical career after that, uh, it uh, originated with, um, with uh, John Wheeler, because John Wheeler posed to me the problem of um, how do you form a black hole in the simplest possible case out of gravitational waves, okay. out of the implosion of gravitational waves. But he knew that I couldn't solve this problem at that time. So he gave me a simpler problem, oh. uh, which is uh, how it would admit spherical symmetry, while the gravitational waves, of course, do, do not admit spherical symmetry. And this was uh, by a, a model problem with scalar waves. All right, but uh, it uh, took me quite a long time to solve even that problem mathematically. And um, eventually after 40 years, I solved also the original problem that is in the absence of any symmetry, whatever, that gravitational waves can focus to form a black hole. Well, I should say that uh, a large, uh, a considerable part of my career was um, not inconsiderable in any case, uh, was um, to had the aim of de developing mathematical methods to solve the problems that were posed to me by John Wheeler back in 1968, actually. So just when uh, Remo came to America. And now uh, also to say something uh, about Wheeler, but in connection with uh, Remo, I should remind uh, everybody, well, I should remind Remo uh, in particular of this uh, wonderful uh, presentation that Wheeler made. Well, Wheeler made very wonderful presentations with uh, the blackboard, the full of uh, pictures with chalk of different colors. And these, uh, <laughs> These presentations were later photographed, well, immediately after we were, were photographed, and that's how we, we have them. Well, one such thing appears in, I don't know if you, everybody can see, the autobiography of Wheeler, uh, Geons, the Black Holes, and Quantum Foam. Here is Wheeler, and it has a, a mountain, and the, oh, I should put it further away, perhaps, right? And so it has a, a person sitting on the mountain. I think it, it is the Pope. Mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> this head uh, in the front is Tullio Regio. Uh, now, um, inside the book, it talks about it more. And here you can see myself. So you can see how people change over so many years. Yes. This is my turn. Yes. And uh, it says uh, uh, below that. Uh, Dimitrios? Dimitrios? Yes. Uh, you know, we could we could speak for hours and days about right. all these beautiful, extraordinary things which happened, I know. and this picture is particularly nice. <laughs> and I am, but, I am coming to a conclusion. Uh, yes. uh, well, 
Okay, it is that the, it says here in this picture inside, the, it says that the writing on the blackboard is mine, that is Wheeler's. But Demetrius has replaced the magic mountain by Thomas Mann with Purgatorio Dante. And you can see from the picture. Anyway, I cannot call it quite right. So that's what he said. But in fact, what he doesn't say is that in the audience, there was Remo. And uh, I was watching his face. And when I erased and put Purgatorio Dante, his face lighted up because he was obviously delighted that we had now reached a higher level of literature. So uh, <laughs> uh, this is what I remember. In any case, now many years have passed. I wish uh, Remo uh, uh, continued many years of uh, happy life and a productive life. And that uh, he comes back after this uh, short uh, illness. Okay. Uh, with a, Thank you a very much. Better than even before. <laughs> and that, that's all. Happy 80th birthday. Thank you. Thank you. Very much. Thank you, Dimitri. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you and see you soon. Bye. Bye. So thank you. And uh, now it's uh, time to hear Bob Janssen. Thank you again, Dimitrios. You're welcome. So, um, so how much time uh, left? Uh, certainly 15 minutes. Well, um, I, I really don't need a lot of time because I created this as a sort of do-it-yourself uh, journey that you can take at your own leisure. I'll just sort of guide you a little bit um, to some of the things that I have listed here. First of all, it turns out that uh, yesterday was Roy's birthday. I didn't know that. Oh. Day, Roy. Oh, thank you. <laughs> yes, yesterday. Um, so what am I here doing? Well, you know, if you go back to the usual paragraph that's in all the Marshall Grossman meetings, at the end it says, uh, paying attention to the interplay between physical predictions and mathematical foundations. A lot of us have been attracted to general relativity for various reasons, some of us because of mathematics, Many more of you for the physics uh, that, in fact, the new age of relativistic astrophysics made possible, and which this conference showcases. But without the mathematicians, none of you would be here. It's turned out that Ricci and Levicivi are both uh, Italian mathematicians built on their predecessors the necessary tools that Marcel Grossman himself transmitted to Einstein in order to just have the tools to formulate general relativity. And in fact, Relativistic astrophysics would not have taken off without Roy, Roy Kerr's mathematical solution, which was then transformed by Boyer and Lindquist uh, in a usable form. Uh, on the mathematical side of the fence, and uh, in this little five-minute talk, even 10-minute talk, whatever you give me, I want to bring attention to the human side of our joint endeavor. Obviously, um, when we do these collaborations on an international level, we are able to have relationships with people around the globe. And really, that uh, gives us a lot of pleasure, I think, uh, apart from the intellectual uh, exchanges that we have. So um, it's exactly 50 years ago that I met Raymo in 1972. I was a sophomore at uh, Princeton, and he uh, offered a uh, student-initiated seminar on uh, differential geometry for general relativity. And <clears throat> that... <clears throat> Uh, I talked about 20 years ago at his 60th birthday, um, and here's a group photo. You can see Natalie right there in the middle in the back, and there I am next to Natalie. Of course, Thibaut in the front, Fong, um, and many others here. Also, Ramo and his family, <laughs> who showed up at the uh, last minute for this photo. <clears throat> Um, I wrote the details there uh, in this long paper about um, the early years of Remo and, and Rome and uh, connection with, uh, with Princeton. Uh, since uh, I'm following here Dimitri, I found these old pictures of Dimitri in his office. So you can see outside the window, there's Jadwin. 
physics and not physics, but the, the gym. Here they were discussing. Here is with my wife, Ani. A little bit better smile from Ramo this time. And here, just uh, five years before, in 1990, was uh, Marco Devani and his wife with Ramo. And there I am again. So my role, I think, in uh, here with Ramo uh, has been sort of as a people historian. Ramo started out with the group G9, Grupo 9, at uh, La Sapienza in Rome. And I created sort of a timeline of photos. You can look at this at your own leisure. And as well, <clears throat> some of the people starting out in the beginning with the original figures. Uh, and I was there right at the beginning, second year. And then there were all the students from the G9 group. They only had university degrees until uh, the mid late eighties when the PhD program in Italy was finally introduced. And there were many students. In fact, uh, it was very much of a family uh, group where we had a lot of social interactions. Anyway, lots of names. So in fact, if you go <clears throat> look up on the web, the golden age of general relativity, you'll find uh, a certain person talking about this golden age, which was around 70, 67 to 74. I was at Princeton the last four of those years and well, 75, yeah. So overlap with Ramo and myself and this uh, golden age of relativity. Um, so I, the first thing that Ramo did was uh, look for people to do projects and he wondered about Luigi Bianchi's work that he saw in Lando Lichet's uh, text, but he never knew what to do with it. So he thought maybe we should translate it together. He never had the time. So I did it myself based on my college Spanish. 30 years later, that became published as the Golden Oath, Holding in General Relativity and Gravitation. Uh, we also, along with uh, another student, had an occasion to meet Kurt Gödel. Um, here was a 1973 faculty photo. If I look at this a little bit in the right position, you can see Ramo there. Oops, it's got my cursor there. And uh, Wheeler, um, right behind him is Mark Strobing. He's the one that changed me from going to, into mathematics to physics. Uh, here's my graduating class. And if we can do a close up, we'll see, in fact, uh, the other undergraduates who worked with Ramo. There was Mark Johnston, who was responsible for the logo of Equinut, uh, Bob Leach. Um, Mark also went to see uh, Kurt Gödel. I did it myself, but Ramo and him and Mark went to see him on another occasion. Um, there was also Rick Hani uh, at the same time, a few others. Uh, of course, here is Mark's uh, graphic that was then converted into the logo and eventually um, in the sculpture by Pirelli that is given as a Marcel Grossman Award. Can read some of the details about those guys here. Um, yeah, here's some other pictures of uh, Dimitri. This is with uh, Claudio Teitelboim, later uh, changed his name to Bunster. Here we are at the Institute, um, not far from Girdle's office, small building to the right. There I am with these two guys. Um, I think in 1975, on that trip that Thibaut just talked about, that's when Ramo popped into my um, apartment in Berkeley with Thibaut and I met him for the first time. Um, and then that same year, Ramo had a cosmology school at Eriche where I met um, the people who were responsible for general relativity down in Naples. Um, that was Giovanni Platania and Ruggiero de Ritas. Unfortunately, Ruggiero died of a virus many years later. Here um, is an old photo of Remo with myself and a Japanese office mate from the back end of uh, 
La Sapienza Physica. I was a little bit uh, built there, looks like, when I pictures. Here I was on a pedestal there in Rome. Anyway, old times. See if I can get back to my presentation here. Um, Marcel Grossman, I got involved uh, only from the second meeting on, and in uh, 1985, uh, and we had a nice meeting in Rome. In 94, I started beginning to do the proceedings. So there's a long history here of uh, the proceedings. This page I sort of set up myself. Um, another thing that happened early on uh, was George Coyne at uh, the Specula Vatican Observatory joined forces to allow, in fact, two of the three countries that led to the foundation of ICRA initially. Bill Stoiger was also the GR person there. Here we are in 2012 after Fung's funeral uh, with Bill, the last time we saw him. Um, and in fact, here is George with <clears throat> Remo and Jacopo, and also my uh, longtime friend and collaborator, Donato Vini, who's currently working with uh, Thibault. And of course, uh, through George, we were able to uh, meet the Pope. Here is <clears throat> George with uh, Pope John Paul II, and there I am, almost meeting him, and there he turns towards me. There's Mar Mauro Javalisco in the back. In fact, can see George right there again. While I'm here, um, here's Paul Boynton and his son Ryan. They helped out a lot in uh, MG5 and, and uh, Rome in 1985. This is Jim Hartle in the back there. Um, here's Fong and his wife meeting the Pope. That was our Vatican connection. Um, in 1982, um, Raymond and I sat down with my passport and we created a new travel document to allow Svi Peran to enter China without his Israeli passport. It's an interesting memory. I think that was at the beginning of using tech um, to set this up. The golden years of uh, the group G9 were the late 80s, early 1990s. Um, there are a lot of pictures in my G9 uh, photo listing of those years. Ramo uh, was also uh, sending me on various uh, tasks. There was the work of Carlo Catania at Rome. He never really understood. And so he encouraged me and Donato Bini and Paolo Perini to sort of think about these three plus one ideas that were uh, investigated in the 1950s before this golden age of relativity. And that led to our work on uh, gravito electromagnetism. Um, in 1988 in Perth, it was the beginning of uh, emails, and so I insisted on collecting everybody's email, and then at the end, uh, we gave them to Malcolm McCollum, and that was used to create what's just now hyperspace. Um, in 2001, there was the Fermi meeting, uh, and the famous Fermi project began, where we translated a lot of his early work on general relativity. It has a long history now of 20 years, in which it's still um, yet to uh, conclude. At a certain point, it's bifurcated into two different books. Let's hope uh, they soon see the light as Ramo has uh, promised. Um, from them, early those early papers, we discussed uh, this question that um, Fermi had addressed when he was only 20 years old and relativity itself, general relativity was only a couple years old, this four thirds mass problem. Unfortunately, my uh, long discussion with uh, Donato and Andrea was never published because we were waiting for this Fermi project to be concluded. But we did uh, publish this short thing in uh, one aspect that sort of concluded the calculation that Fermi had initiated in those papers, but really never finished. Um, in 2000 teens, <laughs> uh, my friend Donato teamed up with Thibault and they've been working uh, furiously together. Uh, over this past decade. I'm really happy about that. 2021, uh, I finally finished uh, the delayed proceedings, uh, which I hope will be online this month. That's been promised to me by World Scientific. 
just to go back, let's look at some of these pictures. Um, this was an air, uh, school at Verena. You can see uh, Ramo there <clears throat> with uh, Gerda Olczak. She was with North Holland before we switched to World Scientific. These were the student helpers at uh, 1985 MG5 uh, in Rome. There's Gerda again. She helped. It was the last time North Holland published proceedings. That same meeting, there was Chandra Sekar, um, Ms. Fong, Bill Stoiger, uh, Dave <clears throat> uh, uh, Brahma Shun. Some more meetings. I've already seen that one. Uh, this was our lunch crowd <clears throat> uh, G9. We used to go to a nearby park and have lunch, pizza. The secretariat uh, for many years, Cesare, Armida, Julia. It was at Castel Gandolfo. This was the early days before uh, internet phoning. Ramo was uh, multitasking there. Oops, where did I go? Um, Song Dujong and his family. Seen some of these. <clears throat> Here's Natalie with us. There she is next to me. Song Young Wan. And You've already seen these others. Uh, Jacksonville we had the group again, an APS meeting. So <clears throat> I just sort of uh, jumped around, but that's uh, all I really wanted to say. It's been a pleasure um, having all these friendships through Ramo all these years and meeting all these interesting people. Um, thank you, Ramo. You gave me Italy as a second life, and I really appreciate it. So those of you who are interested can uh, go to this webpage and look at some of the photos on your own leisure time. And that's it for me. I'll stop the share. Ah, we are happy to see you. <laughs> Thank you for this uh, nice talk, Bob, which reminds uh, many pleasant uh, memories to a, lot, uh, a number of us. Thank you very much. Your webpage is extraordinary, so with all these pictures. So thank you very much for having been helping Remo for all these 50 years. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you. You're welcome. And now uh, Roy Kerr is uh, going to uh, speak. So I guess you first have to do something. No, it's not sharing anymore. So we just need uh, Roy Kerr. Hi, Roy. Roy, uh, yeah, how do I get on? Uh, share my video. No. Can you hear oh, us? <laughs> can you hear us? That video. Yes, you can. There, hmm? Say yes, you can hear. Yes, I can hear everybody. No problem at all. I'm just trying to get my face on the screen. Okay, so the problem is. Ah, share the screen. No, that didn't do any good because I don't have a screen. Um, okay, can you put my face on the screen? Oh, we see you. We see you. No. Uh, I know somewhere. Uh, there should be a button where I push it, um, yes, so that so that you. I'm not going to show anything uh, on the screen myself. I I just want me on the screen like the last like Bob was for a while. Uh, damn, I'm pushing buttons here, but they don't seem to do anything. You can just talk, Roy. We see you. Bob, would you get me? Uh... You are on the screen. We are watching you. They can see you. Oh, they can see me. Okay. Yes. Well, I'm seeing rubbish here. I'm going to get rid of that. I'm seeing Robert Jensen, actually. <laughs> uh, all right. 
Well, I don't have to look at myself. What I'm going to talk about is basically two things. The first is uh, a, the work by Jose Jorge and Ramo on uh, the two body problem. Okay, something which uh, surprised the hell out of me. Now, I, I was in, well, first of all, I should congratulate Ramo on reaching 80. It's very difficult, as I found out myself. <laughs> the next eight years have been a wee bit more difficult, but I'm looking forward to 100. And I'll hope the same for you, Raymond. Now, I was in Pescara probably about five years ago when uh, we, Margaret and I were actually staying in Raymo's apartment. And I remember Raymo saying to me that he didn't believe that uh, these enormous calculations of the LIGO people to calculate or the relativists to calculate the uh, motion of two particles collapsing, collapsing in together, two black holes collapsing. He didn't believe that they had actually had to do such enormous calculations. And he thought that it all would come from the uh, first order. Okay, so he gave the problem to uh, uh, to Jorge and uh, Jose. And Jose, I think, was, was a graduate student then who did the calculations. Now, it seemed like two weeks later at the most, Ramo came to me and said, uh, what they've done is they have taken uh, simply each particle moving in the field of the other, a first order approximation, and they have calculated uh, the uh, the the motion for two collapsing black holes collapsing in this way, and they pretty much agree with the LIGO results, the calculations of LIGO. LIGO had got a mass of eighty three for one of the particles, I think, and something quite a bit lower for the other. Uh, Jorge's work and Jose's work. Uh, seem to agree with the same LIGO curves using a mass of 61 solar masses and whatever the other one was. Now, when he told me this, I shouted out, it's the Kerr-Schild approximation. Now, what am I, I better explain what I meant by that, because I don't think I ever explained it to Raymo at the time. Uh, I was involved back in 58 in uh, Enfeld Hoffman work. At that point, Einstein and Enfeld had, be, had not been able to show that the, that the uh, mass times acceleration and the Newtonian forces should be added together. They seemed to get that what, they both had to be zero. Now, it was obvious to them and to everybody else that they should be added together or equated, given, given, uh, depending upon what sign you're taking. Uh, okay, so I, I was a student at Cambridge at the time, and so I looked at uh, this whole problem, but not from a physicist's point of view, more from a, an old 19th century trained mathematician's point of view. And what I saw was that they were actually trying to prove far too much. They were never going to be able to satisfy the field equations and their, or the reduced field equations and their coordinate conditions at the same time in all the approximations. What they really were trying to do was make sure that uh, they could satisfy the reduced field equations. They had taken the radiation gauge and reduced the equations for slow motion to Laplacians. These were easy to solve, but then they had to satisfy the coordinate conditions, and this was the problem. So what I showed was that 
they were asking for far too much. What you really wanted to do was solve the reduced field equations and then make sure that when you added all the fields together, that the, radi that the coordinate conditions were then satisfied to an appropriate order. Now that meant that the equations of motion were being exp expanded at the same time and uh, it all sorted out. And I, I also found, of course, that uh, you had to satisfy the equations of angular momentum spin, which had been totally ignored in the einstein infeld work. Okay, and at the time I pushed the calculations for the slow approximation for the fields one step beyond what had been done. But that, and I found that the, everything agreed with what einstein infeld had and also explained it. At, I also at that time looked at the fast approximation and calculated the first order effects there and found that each particle moved in the field of the other as you would expect in the first order. The uh, being a student and having no supervisor in relativity, I had no idea how to publish things in those days and I published in Novo Cimento. Uh, and so nobody ever read the papers. So you won't find them mentioned in the literature. Now, wh why I mention this is at that time, because there were no black hole solutions, people used as the first approximation that the field was M over R for each particle, just the, which is... Uh, the lowest order term in uh, Schwarzschild. Okay, now we didn't have the black hole solution. <clears throat> when, when I found this solution, I went to a lot of trouble to put it in a non-singular coordinate system. That's the uh, Kerr solution. And what I noticed was that the, that it was of the form flat space plus the square of a null vector. So it was a perturbation of flat space. Now, metrics of that form, the inverse is just flat space minus the square of, an, of a, uh, a null vector. One's covariant, the other's contravariant. And in fact, the vectors are the same. They just are raised and lowered with the uh, flat space metric. Now, in that coordinate system, there are no singularities except at the origin. Uh, the, uh, it was Pepper Petru who actually showed that all metrics of that time can be put in what's called the Boyer-Lindquist form. That uh, uh, in which most of the off-diagonal terms are eliminated. Now I had this Pepper Petru's uh, preprint, which is a beautiful paper. He looked at all, all metrics which are actually symmetric and stationary, and also assumed that they were if they were non-singular at infinity, and then he proved a theorem that. If there were no singularities on the axis of rotation at large distances from the origin, okay, at, yeah, at infinity, if you will, then you could eliminate the off-diagonal terms. Now, in the summer, at the, at the end of the, uh, the, the uh, spring semester in Texas, Ray Sa Sachs and I, decided one day we were going to find the in, an interior solution for to occur. We both thought we were the cat's pajamas, as it were, <laughs> for this sort of thing. So we went into one or other office, I think it was race, and uh, we started looking at the Kerr metric. Now, the first thing we did was, because of Petra Petra, we got rid of the off-diagonal terms, put it in the Boyle-Lindquist form. 
And then we sat and stared at that for at least 10 minutes. And at that point, we, Ray and I both decided that if we stared at it for 50 years, we still weren't going to find an interior solution. So we said, oh, to hell with it. We went off and had morning tea. Actually, now it's 50 years later, and it's 60 years later almost, and there is no interior solution. There are actually lots of interior solutions when I say there are none. Lots of people calculate interior solutions, but nobody believes them. Okay, they think, oh, that can't possibly be true. Where's the singularity? Which brings me, which I'll talk about later. Okay, so at this point, we know that uh, a black hole is of the form of flat space plus a perturbation. Okay. What about two black holes? When I talk about the Kerr shield approximation, I mean, instead of starting with flat space, dx squared plus dy squared plus dz squared minus dt squared, I mean, that flat space, instead of starting with that plus m1 over r1 plus m2 over r2, with the appropriate vectors and all. Uh, you can start with flat space plus the square of a null vector for one particle plus the square of a null vector for the other. So that's the first order solution. Now, an idiot would expand it in terms of M and A. Possibly expanding in terms of A is a good idea. In some situations, I don't know. But it is not necessary. This this idea that expansions are just polynomial expansions is uh, not true. So you can start with that. Now, when I, the trouble with that is, if you look at the next order field, it's going to involve derivatives of one of these functions, the square of a null vector, times derivatives of the other one. And I didn't think, uh, especially given that one would have to use the uh, retarded uh, outgoing form of Kerr shield of, of uh, the Kerr metric. The Kerr metric is usually given with the ingoing ray uh, being the null vector. There's an equivalent formulation in which you use the other principal null vector, the outgoing one. So uh, I didn't think that if one then took account of the retarded nature of, of any uh, approximation like this, I didn't think one, that I could integrate the equations. So I didn't do anything with them. But when Jorge and Jose and Remo came up with this result, which tended to show that what they did was working in that first order, I realized that one wouldn't have to go any higher. And uh, that if you just take this first order uh, approximation, flat space plus two null vectors squared, and, uh, and look at the, uh, well, you can, from that, you can derive in both the fast approximation, which is what we're talking about here, or you, you could do it in a slow approximation in just the same way. And you will find that each particle will move, each black hole will move on the effective field of the other, uh, which is pretty much what, what this group of three people have done. So I don't expect a significant different result in the first order to the one that uh, they got, which is why I believe their result is very good. Uh, the, uh, this fast approximation, I only looked at it in the lowest order and I used renormalization uh, to, uh, get the, the uh, corrections to the straight line motion that you get for two interacting particles. 
afterwards, uh, there was fantastic work done on this by, uh, well, first of all, by Thibaut de Moore, who, who realized that, uh, well, you didn't have to look at arbitrary motion. You consider you could consider motion which where the trajectory wasn't changing much. It may have been curving, but the rate of curvature, the rate of change of the curvature was very small. And so he managed to push this approximation much higher. Now, I haven't seen much about it in recent years, so I presume that it didn't really solve the problem. Also, I would have to say that uh, Thibault and others' idea of the equivalent one body is absolutely correct for this, uh, for the collapse of two black holes into one. Uh, we're not seeing anything that's happening locally. All we're seeing is the distant fields. And what we're seeing is a perturbation of a black hole forming. So I, I, I had no books when I was up in uh, uh, the last place I was at, uh, Taronga. Absolutely no library available. So everything I thought about, I had to do it in my own head. So I, had, I did not have a copy of uh, Chandra Sikar's work, but I'd love to see how much his perturbations of a single black hole agree with the what you see at, in LIGO. I don't care what you see, what's happening back at the black holes because we're never going to see them. Uh, what I'm interested in is what is LIGO seeing locally. Uh, it may be that when I talk about the Kerr's shield approximation. That may be exactly what Donato and uh, and uh, and Thibault and Andrea are doing at the moment. I know they're doing something different with with this. Anyway, that's that was the thing that happened with Ramo that really left me flabbergasted when I realised that this simple bit of work took care of the enormous amount of work that other people have done. Also, uh, am I still on your screen, by the way? Very well. Yes, I can yes, see you. Still yeah. there. I, because I touched something and something happened on my screen. Anyway, yes. if I'm still there. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I'm not muted, am I? Yes, we can see you. That's fine. Okay. Hi. Yeah, that's strange. I don't know. All I can say is Jorge A. Rueda. He's advertising here <laughs> in the middle of my screen. Uh, uh, I'm sorry. Look, at 88, um, my ability to remember <laughs> and work out things like that is diminishing quickly. So now, uh, the second thing, how am I doing for time? I hope I've only, I've still got 10 minutes left. I have been talking recently about singularities in black holes. Now, the, first of all, what is my vision of what happens when a neutron star collapses into a black hole? Well, what I see is this neutron star as it's forming from the remnants of a supernova, it's gradually getting bigger and bigger, spinning very fast. The gravitational field around it, as it spins faster and faster, but is nevertheless shrinking because it's now a cold neutron star. As it shrinks, there will be a region around it in which it's more and more difficult for light to escape to infinity. And it's extremely difficult for a, uh, uh, a rocket ship to get away from the surface of that neutron star. Now, <laughs> am I lost again? Uh, we cannot see. Mute. 
Renato, uh, oui, oui. We can we, we cannot see Roy and hear Roy because you I don't. Wait, wait, wait. No, no, I'm, I'm going to give up. If I, no, no, no. Where, where the, sorry, for God's sake, can somebody tell me how how to get on the screen? Put me on the. No, you screen. are. You are no, don't don't worry, Roy. We can hear you, and we. I still three Yes. No, but we have No. Am I still being heard? Yes. Yes. No. <laughs> well, you can't even hear me ask that yes. question. Uh, it's like six years. Share screen. That doesn't do it. Oh, they heard me. <laughs> they heard me. Oh, my wife says they heard me. Okay. Well, I'm going to presume I'm being heard. <laughs> All right. <laughs> yes, we can. Um, very well. What about when this neutron star collapses down? Okay, and gradually it gets harder and harder to escape, and eventually light cannot escape. Now, the question is, is there a singularity? Well, there's a singularity in the Kerr solution, but that's the same singularity that you get in Newton's solution. Of course, if you've got no matter present, you've got to have something, and it, so there's that singularity. So you can forget about that as being the reason for a singularity. The only reason you believe in a singularity is Roger Penrose wrote a paper, okay, in which he claimed to prove that either there was a singularity inside any black hole with a, sorry, inside any trapped surface, either there was a singularity or there were uh, like like geodesics of finite affine length. Now, did I ever believe Rogers Penrose? Of course not, because there's no trapped surface inside the inner horizon of Kerr. And Rogers' whole theorem is pushing, basically starting with a trapped surface and pushing it back down until he eventually gets a singularity, he hopes. So there's no trapped surface inside the event horizon of Kerr. So any singularities had to occur between the two horizons. Now, I, when I first found the solution, uh, that was when the, that was in uh, 63. And at the end of the year, there was a conference on which tried to figure out what Gamma ray, not gamma ray bursts, uh, quasars were. People had seen quasars and they knew that they had to be e enormous because of the amount of energy coming out. But there was no theory at that moment that could reduce the sorts of energies that were involved. So about 300 uh, astronomers, astrophysicists, and about 50 relativists, cosmologists, went to this conference in Dallas. And uh, during that, I gave a paper. Uh, and uh, uh, that went over like, as they say in English, a lead balloon. But, uh, it, but I showed this and uh, the, at the end of the talk, I remember Pepe Petro jumping up and screaming at the audience that they should wake up and stop reading the newspapers because this, that we've been hunting for this for 50 years. Okay, soon afterwards, uh, Roger uh, uh, Blanford showed that the magnetic field around a black hole could generate the sort of energies that uh, were needed for, for quasars. So it turned out that my solution was useful to them. Uh, okay. Uh, but now, so what about the singularity? Well, I never believed in it. I looked, I had read Robin's, Robert uh, Rogers' paper when it first came out. And I saw that it suffered from exactly the same problem that anything Stephen Hawking's 
papers suffered from, and that was when in doubt, assume the result. And so they, they just assume whatever they need to prove a preconceived notion. So I, I got, in, their, in their papers, I normally get to page three and I've seen three assumptions I don't agree with and uh, so I quit. But actually in that paper, Roger proved, possibly proved that either a singularity existed inside or the words light rays of finite affine length. Now, before I went to da the Dallas meeting, I calculated the motion of light rays along the axis of curve. That's uh, the axis of rotation. They're the easy ones. And of course, one of them came from outside and went straight through to the uh, to the center, to whatever was in the center. Uh, the other one uh, started asymptotic to one of the horizons and ended up asymptotic to the other. Because it wasn't known what, where the horizons were exactly at that point. I had done a calculation, but I was using, I, I didn't have boyle Lindquist coordinates and I got the wrong, wrong answer. But I knew that the event horizons crossed the black hole the <laughs> axis of rotation at these two points. Now, those light rays that started one and end at the inner horizon, they were basically, if you were on a spaceship and you were going down the axis to hell in the center and you Shone fired a photon upwards relative to you, it would continue to fall, of course, in the coordinates of the black hole. But it, when it got close to the inner horizon, it would slow down and would never get there. That uh, has finite affine length. In fact, there's another much simpler. Uh, light like ray in Kerr that has finite length. And that is if you shot a photon off just as you cross the inner horizon, it wouldn't fall in, it would stay there. So it, that one is uh, stationary in the coordinate systems except for time. It, it's a, the time will vary but not the R theta and phi coordinate. That one stays on the inner horizon forever. If its affine parameter behave, decays exponentially in the future, negatively exponentially, it's of the form of uh, S dot equals minus A S. So whatever it starts at, it will decay away with this uh, exponential to a finite value. All, the, all this means is that affine parameters are a lousy measure of distance along a light run. They Hello? have this tendency to decay, to decay exponentially. Hello? So Can you hear I better finish there. So what I'm saying is forget about the singularities. They don't exist. Uh, of course. Strong statements. On hmm. which this is a strong and uh, fa fascinating statement on which we could perhaps uh, close the session. And, and, and thank you. We thank you very much because your talk. Okay, thank you. Time to quit. Yep. Uh, interested me <laughs> because I've been working on the, on, on the post Minkowski approximation to general relativity. And uh, your the Kershire coordinates to describe the, your solution, which is a Minkowski plus what you call a perturbation, but it's a, because Ritchie is linear. Uh, linear. The sound this is fantastic. Is the sound is terrible here. Yes. I can't hear. We can't hear. Ah, we, okay. I cannot hear so, what people are saying. So we will write to you. I will personally write to you because I have questions. And in the meantime, I think we should thank you very much 
Can you? Oh, okay. Oh, thank <laughs> you. Thank you for thanking me. Uh, I, te I thank you, uh, Roy, very much. I am now finally in contact. I could follow, and we will keep discussing for a year to come Definitely. with serenity about these many problems. I thank you so much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you. Good idea. Now, so next is um, no, no, he's not shaving his ah, okay. um, So, our next, oh, uh, we have here our uh, Rashid. So, yeah, where is Rashid? Rashid, okay, I will let for him. So, Rashid, Rashid is coming. Yes, this is Oh, you can see that. Uh, we'll connect, like one second, maybe connect me. So it's nice to see you again after your talk yesterday. Mm -hmm. It's nice to see you again after your oh. talk yesterday. <laughs> we will continue, but I'm very impressed to hear them. This is what the important point Yes, yes. So she is in good mood and. The cable is uh, short. Yes, you have to. Oh, is it there? Yes. But is it seat for chairman? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Yes. Um, wait. Okay. Let me. Uh, oh. No, 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 this one, you this one, this one is okay, this, this, uh, this is the, the right one, okay, um, this, this is the C. Okay. So let's consider this, uh, um, we have to connect, no, I will take it out, this is one, yes, but I will take it out. What? Should we see how it works? Hello? Uh, Professor, we are connecting the computer. Just one second. Yes, very good. Yes. Okay, now I've restarted. So um, oh, Roy, I hope you read the, the our last paper, and yes. uh, and the fact okay. that uh, the condition of non-stationarity, which is very important. And uh, exactly. okay, Margaret says happy birthday, Raymond. Okay, birthday. Margaret, thank you so much. Thank you, thank you a lot. Uh, it has been extremely kind to be here. No, I'm still here. Uh -huh. Rashid, here we are not showing there, but the problem is this. I can see you. Mark. Rashid. But we are we allowed it yesterday. No, no, but you... there are two screens, one here, another one there. Excellent. I see Remo on the screens. It's most oh. important. I don't know if in the Zoom they see. No, you we don't see. You see, you, you see. We see what you see here. Oh. Uh, okay, see now it's fine. Screen? Now it's fine, yes. but we should share this. You share, share this one. Okay. Oh, no, okay. this is not this. this. Is what we see. Yes, yes, yes. No, oh. it's not this. No, uh, is this one? Yes, it is okay. Here. Now everything is fine, I think. Uh, I made full screen. But yes. could you move Yes. C'est vous? No, no, you can put here also. If you click here, you will. Which one? No, no. Okay. It should be the slash. Voila. So it's uh, from yes, nice yeah, you change from here. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. Please, the floor is yours. Please. Thank you. <laughs> yes, it is great pleasure for me to speak here. And especially, I was very happy when I heard today several times the voice of Remo, because, you know, all these days we were praying that everything will, uh, will be okay with him. And now, as already Roker told, that uh, we expect that we will see Remo many times in the future. 
on different conferences. Uh, Rema told me that I should mention that uh, how we will judge. You know, you know me uh, very long, and you should mention our different meetings and especially conferences in Belize. And it was very difficult for me to remember the details of our meeting in Belize because. The biggest conference, international conference, first in my life, which I visited, was conference in Belize on gravitation and astrophysics in 1968. This was time of iron patent, and uh, foreigners in Russia were very, very rare. And I was only 25 years old, Remo was 26, and uh, I met the a lot of people who then became my friends. There was, okay, I will tell you all the names of novelists and the extremely well-known people. There was Kip Sorn, there were several uh, other people very well-known. There, were, there was uh, a few advisor of uh, Remo, uh, John Archibald Wheeler. There were very, very well-known people and a lot of people from Russia, also very important. And every of you can uh, understand what does it mean that I was trying to remember what was occurring in September of 68. Mm -hmm. Dr. was there. I was very young and this was, was practically, as I understand, 54 uh, years ago. It's a lot. And uh, then we met with Remo many, many times, but I can show you only uh, several. Uh, I'm afraid that I will be longer than 20 minutes. Therefore, I decided to cut. Hmm? Yes, I decided to cut a lot of slides. I show only, oh, okay, I can maybe show here. It doesn't. No, no, I, I can help you. Yes, next one. This oh, one. okay. I remember the meeting, which much later, this was 87, which Remo organized, uh, how to say, in Vatican. In reality, I recognized that Remo is there only when I saw him there, because it was, uh, that, that was the year, and it was unbelievable, because uh, Galilei Comet appeared. And everybody at the time still thought that Halley Comet was exactly in the time when Christ was born, and there is star appeared, and this was Halley Comet. Therefore, uh, Europe, European Space Agency, Japan, uh, United States, NASA, and Russia, they all sent several spacecraft to meet this. Um, to be this comet in space and to see what is it there. This comet which regularly appears again and uh, at least in Arabic, uh, Japanese, Chinese, and, uh, and uh, Persian uh, books, it, it is written uh, this, uh, several thousand years it was observed by people. And one year is very close to the date of birth of Christ. <laughs> People agree with this. And uh, after when uh, Russians sent Raid Sagdev, sent who knew also Rebbe, knows Rema very well, uh, two Gali missions were just crossing the uh, path of the comet. And went very close to its nucleus. But they were still several tens of kilometers from the, uh, from the nucleus, which was relative velocity was 60 kilometers per second of two space. Uh, and these two missions went, but they gave to Europeans exact coordinates and photo of the nucleus of the comet. Therefore, it was uh, then European mission made much better investigation of the central part and what is a chemical abundance. I remember very well this and after all these participants of different missions were invited to visit Paul. And you see, you all remember this uh, 
well-known Polish pop. And uh, I also was invited as a member of the Russian delegation, like a practically similar photo. But Zeltovich was invited, who was not participating in this mission at all. And, uh, you know, he was not a member, but he was invited, Halatikov were invited, several people from Russia were invited, and then I recognized that Rema asked the Pope, and Pope invited them. It was extremely interesting. And uh, there is another photo, I haven't time to show this. Rema introduced uh, Yakov Zeldovich to Pope, and before we were, people told us that we can speak on their own language with Pope, and the Pope will answer your language. He, he knows so many languages. I asked where he learned Russian, and answer was, oh, in uh, Lemberg, in the Lwov, uh, prison in Ukraine, <laughs> <laughs> you know, where Russia captured. It was also an interesting surprise for me to hear. Yes, and uh, uh, when, uh, when uh, all space people were, uh, how to say, introduced to Pope, and then Reva came and introduced several scientists. And Zeldovich came, and it was forbidden to bring anything to the room. And <laughs> Zeldovich brought his book, uh, which was the, uh, how to say, the structure of the universe and so forth, that he gave to Pope <laughs> this, and this present, and you know, everybody was smiling, and then he told several words in Russian, and it was interesting. In my case, when I was introduced by Sakdeev to Pope, I asked Sakdeev, uh, should I tell him well, two, three words just to check, does he know in that <laughs> And Sakdeev, no, never, <laughs> just speak Russian. It was rad, but it was nice and uh, good, also a short conversation. But I, I can tell you that for me, Zeldovich uh, had very warm relation to Remo. And uh, this, you know, such difficult, difficult to forget. But in the end of our meeting, this maybe will be interesting for Remo, in the end of the meeting, Pope gave us a short introduction to astronomy. Ah. It was very impressive. And during his short introduction, only 10 minutes, Pope mentioned it to me. First person who was mentioned was Galileo Galileo, and second was Remo Ruffini. And Remo was happy. Everybody understood that this short introduction to astronomy was written by Remo. It was very nice. Yes, I remember this. Okay, I have to look if I will describe every my image so long that it will be not so nice. Okay, I can tell you that there was very person who in reality changed my life with his discoveries, and this was Ricardo Giacomi. This is the moment when he's getting Nobel Prize for the, the discovery of first X-ray source, Corpix one and for the discovery of X-ray background. X-ray background was discovered earlier than CP. Difference is not very uh, light, but nevertheless. And uh, Ricardo discovered it, and it was very, very, oh, it was after five years after CP, sorry. And uh, I had many conversations with, with Ricardo. Most important for me was the following, that I was at some moment in um, Washington. We had uh, negotiations. There was big Russian delegation, uh, the first version of Spectrum X space. Americans wanted to join. And then uh, two people who then became very good friends, Charlie Pellerin, who was distributing a few billions per year for astronomical projects. At the time, it was just Hubble was launched and so on and so on. And they wanted to put some on Russian spacecraft and to uh, join Russian spacecraft. And there was Banner, Alan Banner. And then we were negotiating what will be in return if we will put their device on the Russian spacecraft and opposite. And this was a very bad story. Alan Banner told everything is impossible, so on and so on. And 
Charlie Pellerin, when Charlie Pellerin was uh, saying that I am really already don't know what to say, he was saying, no, 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 better. At some moment, I thought, let's make a break. Everything was occurring in the building of Space Telescope Institute. And I left the room and was going on corridor and thought, why I'm here? Because nobody else came, because then we were going to Baltimore to Space Telescope Institute. Lady, nice lady came and told, oh, we are now going to shop, we have only time, and all guys who were important and so on, everybody went for shopping, and I went along to make a This I never thought that it's possible, you know, but your space, uh, you are needing spacecraft, you should make a And then I went to the house, the corridor, and met Ricardo, who was director of Space Telescope Institute. Ricardo came to me and asked, Rache, how it is in my peaceful Switzerland? <laughs> you know it is. And then I told me, Ricardo, I don't know what to do. This Alan Banner is telling very bad things, and uh, fortunately, Charlie helps me a little. And he told me, Rache, you are a child. You do not know well-known American again, <laughs> you know, one uh, bad police, uh, policeman and good policeman. And now Charlie is good policeman and father is bad policeman. And they're trying to get from you. Just tell them, boys, I have permission to do this and this. If you like, join. No, goodbye. And then everything will be soft. And it's really was soft in 10 minutes. You know, nobody plays the game. And most important, what we agree is that Mazitz got a place for his device, which Mazitz discovered many dumb records. It's time for me to move. Yes. Uh, okay. And uh, it was possible, uh, after this, it was possible to uh, launch and up to now, more than 20 years. Uh, device of Eugene Mises from the Oslo Institute in St. Petersburg is measuring gamma ray burst in the, on the space. And it's very good. And Ricardo always was telling me, Rashid, let us meet next time in Italy. I will meet Rema Rossini, and he knows you. He hopes to be in my school. And we met several times on Puma and so on with Ricardo. This is another person who played enormously important role in the life of, um, in the life of uh, Raymond. This is John Archibald Wheeler. I met him several times in the life Rashid, of Rashid, Rashid, Rashid. Conversations were very interesting. But Raymond considers uh, Wheeler as very big part and important part of his life. I remember both Remo and Trufini when I saw the black hole of Calcutta, it was shown to be this place where, uh, you know, John Archibald Wheeler captured the word uh, black hole. Okay, it's well known, you can see in Wikipedia. Yes, Remo likes to organize conferences with a lot of young people. You see here, a lot of them, but most important contribution of Remo is obviously the Marcel Grossman conferences, which unites thousands of people from and young people from especially developing countries. I met during these conferences a lot of people coming from China, India, from Russia, from this new republic, new independent republics like Uzbekistan, Armenia, and so on during these meetings. And they had possibility to meet giants of our science. And you know, even Hawking was coming to these conferences. And I'm already uh, too long. I think that Rema made also great choice when he was presenting the awards, uh, Marcel Grossman Awards. And when you see the list of, of people who won this award, you really see that he had very good taste to, uh, to uh, check, uh, to choose the people who got this award. This is a situation. Many thanks to Remo and 
a lot of, I can tell you that they are looking for gamma red bursts. They are looking now for using SRG resist um, um, on this data. And I can tell you most impressive for me is that we detected now nearly 80, uh, the, uh, 80 events of tidal disruption of stars in the vicinity of supermassive black holes. And it's tremendous yes. uh, thing. And uh, a lot of energy is releasing. And I think that Remo will, will find time with his students to work also on the theory of these extremely interesting objects. Many of them have jets create uh, how to say, absolutely not thermal emission, and that's are just thermal disk. You see them and you can compare. But nature is the same. It is the death of star, which is crazy enough to come to close to that. Okay, thank you. Excuse me that I was too long. Uh, can I, uh, Rashid, can you please show the picture? Can you show the picture of Wheeler? No. <laughs> the picture of Wheeler. Hello? Hello? Can you show the picture? Hello? Rashid. 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 Can you? Rashid. Rashid. Hello, Rashid. Rashid, can you? Okay, I thought that. Rashid, can you please can you please take the picture of Wheeler? Rashid. Hello, Rashid. Hello. They don't seem to hear you, Ramo. Yes, uh, try to, try to. They they have already gone on break. I don't know what why they were not paying attention to the Zoom. Yes. Because the beauty of the picture that Rashid show of Wheeler were the picture of Jacopo. I noticed that. Yes, I took a screenshot. And he should have shown that. Uh, you copy of that photo. I don't know. I don't think so. Well, ask Rashid for a copy. Yes. But I wanted to show because Jacopo is there and I wanted him to enjoy that. He was shown both in the Korean group, but apparently they don't listen when I'm interviewing. I don't understand what's what went wrong. Because yes. we're here in the Zoom session while they've all Going to wait for their coffee break. Yes. I did not hear your talk because I was transferring from one room to the other. No what problem. Uh, OK, we will uh, look at the record. Uh, yeah, I just have a bunch of uh, hyperlinks so that I showed a lot of photos like you asked me to. Thank you. I Hello. Hello. Let's see if I can. They can hear me a moment. Um, was very interesting. The talk of Thibault. He does not realize that he has proven that all his work on black holes is wrong. And this is his masterpiece. Hello? Yes, we are, li we are listening to you. Hello, uh, I'm here. <laughs> uh, 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 Orge, if Jacopo is there, tell him that the picture he was looking Wheeler, if you can Ask to show again is him. Hello? Can you, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Who, who are you talking to, Raymond? 
uh, to to Orge, if he's there. Oh, okay. Orge. We can hear each other all very well, but not Orge. Ramo, it's also being recorded on the web and it's visible on the web, so yes. keep that in mind. Yes. Uh, Roy, if you are there, I yes. think the, yes, I'm here. the very, very crucial point is this magnetic field which couples to the care and uh, makes such that the energy of the rotational energy and the electromagnetic energy of the care is extracted. Yeah, yeah. So this is the crucial, crucial point, which makes uh, all the end center of the galaxy to radiate and the gamma ray burst to radiate. And this is the major revolution about the charge. It's not a charge, it's the, it's the coupling between the, the, the rotation of the care, the angular momentum and the magnetic field of the background. And uh, this gives the extraction of energy. And therefore there is no singularity, there is nothing as the star collapses, it couples to the magnetic field and it keeps radiating forever practically until there is energy is radiating. Therefore there is no, no singularity, nothing at all. You're saying there's no black hole. There is the black hole with the magnetic field. That is the key point. It's yeah. a new entity. The black hole is losing energy, therefore it's stationary. Not stationary, it's non-stationary, it's losing energy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And that loss yeah. of energy can keep going for thousands of years. The yeah, what's that got to do with singularities or not singularities? No, there is no singularity whatsoever. There is just uh, the current solution, non-stationary, we couple with the magnetic field, and there is no well, singularity. What I, I was saying was there is no, not even a suggestion of a proof that there should be a singularity. Oh, and in fact, the whole idea of a singularity is some sort of uh, mumbo jumbo. Yes. Is this, uh, this idea uh, of Penrose, which is, uh, uh, um, which is nonsense? I mean, it's this trapping surface. There is no trapping surface around, around the black hole, which is alive. Well, uh, even uh, if there was a trapping surface, that doesn't do a damn thing because if you look at Roger's proof, it starts by <laughs> it starts by claiming something yes. trivial at the start, which isn't true. Yes. It then gets a collection of null rays which do not form a null surface. Yes. Just because you've got a collection. And he treats that as if it's a null surface that nothing can cross. Yes. But the main thing is, even Roger doesn't claim to prove that there's yes. a singularity. He claims to prove a singularity or a null ray of finite half on length. And what I'm showing is that there are, there's an infinite number of such rays inside yes, but, curve. But in the, the present case, we don't have a solution for the Kerr solution, which is stationary. It's non-stationary because it's keeping yeah. radiating. And there is yeah. no way to see inside because it just uh, flow energy out. And that flow of energy is the one which is we see in the gamma ray burst. Yeah. We can explain all the Jev radiation in all details. Yeah, well. And, uh, and the energy, who pays for the energy is the rotational energy of the black hole, which is uh, yeah, yeah. produced. No question about that, that's true. It's uh, the rotational energy, not the reducible mass. The reducible mass can only increase. And therefore, uh, you have the, 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 the kinetic part, the rotational part, and the Coulomb part, which is extractable. Mm. And we see the extraction. That is the most important point in gamma ray burst in galactic nuclei. We see this uh, emission keep going for uh, thousands of years. Mm. 
Well, I hope uh, uh, we can see each other soon. And uh, yes. uh, the meeting is going on at the villa. I don't know if you ever visited Nice. I think so, yes. Yes. Uh, it's, it's been impossible to get out of New Zealand uh, yes. and, and get back in. <laughs> You can, you, it's possible to get out, but not get back in. This is changing fairly quickly. So uh, I'm, hope, I'm hoping that we will be able to uh, travel again sometime. Yes. Say hello to Margaret. I, I saw her in great shape. Hmm? Say you didn't hear. I didn't hear that, so. Say hello to Margaret. Oh, hmm? oh I heard that. Hello, Ray. <laughs> yes, Margaret saying hello back. Yes. I hope you have a good cake. Yes. Cake. Okay. Yes, don't forget to pass a couple of pieces through the internet to us. We would like <laughs> to participate. Ça n'a aucun parce que cette télémétrie, on... elle fonctionnait sur une autre personne. Hi Roy, can you hear me? You're muted. I can't hear you. Unmuted. Now. Uh, now you're unmuted. You're yeah. being broadcast. You're, you're, you're empty chair and now you are being broadcast on the YouTube channel even though we're on break. Okay. <laughs> But I'm not. I'm not on now, am I? Yes, you are. <laughs> oh, why? But I thought I don't know why because not... they're not paying attention in Nice. Hmm? They're not paying attention in Nice for some reason. Your screen is being broadcast still. Oh God. Okay. What do I need to do? No, there's nothing Keep we can do. <laughs> Just mm -hmm. watch what we say. <laughs> I was muted, wasn't I? No. Well, you weren't speaking before, but when you were talking to Ramo, it was now. being broadcast. Uh, hmm? When you were talking to Ramo, it was all being broadcast, as is our yeah, time. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. No, I, I thought that. The, uh, when he talks about trapped surfaces, Rama, he was talking about, he keeps on. It's because people in their mind still believe this crap. <laughs> yes. Right. And, and uh, so Rama they think back. the trap surface has any significance whatsoever. It doesn't have any significance. It is just, I'll tell you the mistakes that were made at the beginning of Roger's paper. The first thing he does is he says, he's got two vectors. Sorry, am I? Yeah, now suddenly my picture's changed. Anyway, uh, the, uh, I, I don't think even Roger believes it because he's never come back to it. And when I wrote and told him that there were uh, nulls, there were light-like rays of finite affine length, he didn't even reply recently, which surprised me. <laughs> They're still on the break. They are still in the break. Yes, they're still on the break. They're yeah. not paying attention because we're being broadcast, Ramo. Yes, we're not broadcast. Now. Are we still being broadcast? Yes, we are. Oh. Oh well. They have no connection, you are saying? I I'm sorry. The people, in, the people in Nice have gone away while we are broadcasting. You and I and uh, Roy are being broadcast live. But they have gone away. They are going to have coffee, maybe. 
Yes, they went for a coffee break, but they forgot to do something about the YouTube broadcast. Oh, Please. yeah. <laughs> well, hello, all you YouTubers. Here we are. <laughs> You'll hear all the dirt that isn't fit to print. <laughs> exactly. The, uh, For our we are enjoying more time for ourselves. I visit the photo Korean city Bambino. The sound is weird. Yeah, Ramo probably should mute himself if he's not talking to us. Oh, okay. <laughs> but he's yeah. he's not paying attention now. Yeah. Right. The problem is when people are not muted, their computer picks up noise and takes over the speaker position. Yeah, yeah. So when you were talking, for example, Jorge's photo would pop up. Ah, yeah. But everybody should be muted except for the real speaker because Zoom will automatically go for where the sound is and say that's the speaker. Yeah, yeah. yes, yes, that's. Uh, and we Ramo when he was trying to get Rashid's attention, but nobody else seemed to be able to hear. Uh, yeah. Anyway, I have no doubt people will talk about singularities and black holes for at least 50 years, at which point they'll realize what a bunch of total idiots they are, and we'll stop talking about them. But we may have to wait for a new generation to come up, because there's no... It's actually the very first singularity theorem, the third singularity theorem I met, was from Stephen Hawking. He came to Christchurch, not to Christchurch, to Texas, and uh, said he had proved this theorem that either in the future there were black holes or there was a singularity, there was, sorry, a singularity in the future, he said, or closed time-like loops. And he didn't say any more than that, except that he used Ray Shaduri's theorem. So I went, this was at the beginning of a weekend. He was just there for the weekend to see uh, George Ellis. Uh, and I spent a couple of days thinking about it. And I told him at a party, I couldn't prove what he said using race to theorem. All I could prove was that you could get, either you, there was a singularity in the future, sorry, a light ray of finite at my length, or, you could get back arbitrarily close to the initial position. But you see, Roy, the key point... Well, he later published that without any reference to me. So I want to know why he thought he had proved more than that originally. But the key point, Roy, the key point yeah. is that, yeah. that uh, they, uh, they were mathematicians without understanding the physical question. If you have a black hole already there, when uh, they, 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 they were the data of the center of the, of the galaxy nearby yeah. the quasar, it was clear that the black hole was the origin and therefore the black hole by definition, if you find the mechanism, cannot be stationary because it has to pay for the rotational energy. Therefore, this yeah, is the thing that awesome. finally we understood. These mathematicians, they did not understand the boundary condition. Namely, black holes need to make jets. Therefore, they must be time varying by definition. Therefore, oh, they no, look, there, then there isn't a black hole in the universe if, if you're going to say it's got to be stationary. Clearly, they either grow or they change their spin or they do all they Exactly, do all but their theorem of Hawking and so forth, assume, and Penrose, assume always stationarity and empty space. 
And this is just impossible because you have to explain the jets, you have to explain the energy source of this object. There are for black holes, like we have finally shown, they are part, the, the Kerm solution is part of a block which has magnetic field as well, and is not asymptotically flat. It is, uh, there is matter around. Yeah, in order well. to All this theorem assumes stationarity and vacuum, and they are irrelevant, totally irrelevant. No, that's right. Well, for one thing, they, at least they start proving some sort of conformal flatness and infinity or something. But what we know of the universe is matter clumps. And the size of the, of the voids and the size of the superclusters are both growing rapidly. I mean, God only knows what the size of the largest uh, void is at, in this era. If there were two ones, two billion light years across five million, five billion years ago. So and the point is that this whole idea of, of, of uh, the universe being, universe being uh, homogeneous and isotropic is beyond stupid now. Yes. There is, God only knows how unisotropic it is, but it's the big, the big, the thing is not that it becomes smooth, it's that it becomes clumped. Yes. You know, everything grows. Yes. Look, uh, I think even our, our neighborhood, there are 10 galaxies which are coming towards us. We're, well, we're one of 10 that are, that are moving together, not just Andromeda, but uh, us, Andromeda and eight others. And so when you talk about dark, uh, the dark energy and the ex acceleration of the expansion, all you're really talking about is that we are in not a supercluster area, but a cluster that is stretching out, a non-cluster, a not necessarily a void, but a low, an area where everything is moving outwards towards bigger, bigger clusters. I mean, if, if we lived in the uh, Boots void, we would, since, ever, since all the galaxies, except for about 60, have left the Boots void in the last uh, few billion years, we would, we would look at our calculations and we would say, gee, the acceleration of the universe is enormous. But if we lived in the middle of a supercluster, we'd be saying, gee, the universe is contracting. And I, that's, what, that's what I see as the, uh, it, it's no longer possible to talk about a home, homogeneity at any level, in the, even in the current universe, let alone in another 10 billion years. Anyway, there's another rant. I, 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 I do not understand what they are doing but I hope for the best. They're the, not having cake? The, uh, yes, the cake, uh, I hope they went to take the cake. <laughs> I, ordered, <laughs> I ordered the cake, but they have to bring it there. <laughs> yeah, well. I have to check a moment. <laughs> Let me call Jacopo. Yes, they're ready. Anybody is ready? Yeah, you have to have something to learn. Oh, so now. And that is. Who is in the very active? The very active. 
which is era page, which is very important, legacy of So uh, I start with, uh, with a snapshot in uh, Les Ouches. Mm -hmm. This is uh, uh, all our students, the five bunches of students in, uh, in Les Ouches uh, with the Renoir Center. So you, you can yeah, you can. How it starts? So it starts in a very interesting way. It started uh, in 2000, 2002. I was invited in Rome uh, during my and uh, with Remo, uh, he has this idea to build uh, a pay, an international page. So we discuss with Nick, uh, with uh, Berlin, uh, with Zurich, Savoie, Sapiens, and to start uh, an agreement between these universities. And so the following agreement was to create this new PhD program. And it was really a new kind of uh, uh, PhD uh, uh, school inside astrophysics. It was never done before. So this, this was the first uh, signature of all uh, institutions, Sapiens, Berlin, Savoy, ETH, with the Cristo Dulo, uh, Nice Antipolis, and uh, Observatoire de la Côte d'Azur, the, the founding members. And so here you recognize it was uh, the president of this, uh, uh, I think. And uh, so Remo and uh, uh, Julia Borgino was at that time the director of the PhD school in this. Yeah, a lot. And this, this was the network, initially the network. Alors, this was uh, when we applied in 2009 for European Fund. And uh, it was 13 institutions, 13. So it was a lot. So people say um, when we apply it, it's a lot, but the project is very interesting. So very interesting because it's, it was a new idea right? to create a network, international network, and to put all together the student for two times a year in the PhD school. And so finally it was accepted for five uh, for uh, uh, five cycles of three years each cycle. So this is um, uh, in Villarati, all the students. So this is a student, you will uh, see the student uh, coming, you know? So this was uh, all the member, and uh, uh, initially the members, then uh, um, uh, Bremen took the place of Berlin during uh, our PhD running, um, because uh, 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 Argent Kleiner retired, so we need a new member, and we welcome uh, Bremen uh, University and Oldenburg also. Huh? So let's move. And what was fantastic that each year we apply for a call on all the planets. And uh, it's, it's, you, you need to see, well, you are in this field, but when you speak with people not in this field, to ask for 10 grants, in relativistic astrophysics. And you got 200 students, some of them with very high level, to apply for this grant. So this is a distribution for, uh, for all people uh, for different uh, continent. And uh, during uh, five years, we, uh, we got 44 uh, students. So we can move. So this is a distribution of so statistics between uh, countries. So, uh, okay, it's a gender balance, so it was uh, uh, in 2012, it was okay. Uh, you, you can see that um, we need to do an uh, effort. In, in this room, the gender balance is so so. <laughs> it's so so, yes. <laughs> okay. And uh, so we need to, to make more efforts. I, I agree with you. I agree. With you. And so this was um, the launch, the inner rigor. Uh, uh, ceremony with um, Albert Arwani and Amé Bonfin. It was in September 2010 in uh, Nice University because it 
was really a, a Miss University was the coordinating institution. Um, Raymond was uh, the president of the PRPG and I was the coordinator. So because we need uh, somebody to do the administration stuff, and so I was this person in charge. You can move. And so I will present because it is essential to do, uh, to have the, the picture of what we have done during these 10 years. So this is the resident, the student, all the students from different countries. Uh, so this was in a, a Nice Observatory. There. So what, it was a first uh, student. So for three years uh, to, uh, to bring them to, to the beach. And uh, you can move. So from all, from many countries, from uh, Russia, from India, Germany, Italy, uh, Brazil, and uh, Austria, Argentina. And uh, so this was the lecture. Uh, so we can see a uh, Pierre Coulet also, a Bernard Magui, for the uh, second uh, cycle. So we can move. So again, a new bunch of students, uh, nine students, China also. So this was upstairs in uh, Villa Rati, so in the seat. So we are uh, mainly each year in September, we start the academic year in this university with uh, three weeks of uh, teaching for all students. So each year we have a new bunch of students. And so the, we, we bring together all the students. So this was a, a very uh, innovative idea. So young students with older students and with uh, top scientists. This was the idea of framework and it is very important. I saw I saw the progress of students during the, the three years of teaching. It is very impressive and very important. So the method was really a good method. So this is a, a student. So it's important that you 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 have uh, you saw before the uh, pulsar and uh, all the things in uh, relativistic astrophysics. Now you see concrete people, young people. So the, the fourth cycle. So this was in Les Ouches, for people who know where is Les Ouches. Les Ouches is uh, uh, close by to, to Mont Blanc. It's, uh, it's a very nice place, huh? okay. So this was an auditorium in Les Ouches, so the students. So this was uh, not the last cycle, the fourth cycle. Yeah, can move. So with, uh, it was a uh, Gelman and Thibault. During a PhD school in Les Ouches. So, really, the, the idea of Primo is to bring all together the students, not one to one as it was usual in PhD, but all the students. So, the student had the, obviously the supervisor in uh, some of uh, universities, Stockholm, Berlin, uh, Bremen, and so on. But two times a year, you bring all the students together with supervisor and with a lecture. So you could have a lecture also from uh, planetology, from um, uh, from Nice Observatory, from uh, other stuff. So this was a lecture from Tito uh, and uh, from Gemma. And this was our last bunch of students, the so last year. In, it was in 2015. Yeah. And this was in Les Georges Menet uh, from uh, Geneva Observatory. So Geneva is not in our, our network, but we ask top scientists from different people. So this was really uh, a very innovative idea. And so this was the signature of the, the consortium agreement between uh, the rector of Sapienza and uh, Giacomo was, uh, was there also. So just received a present sorry, from uh, uh, Sapienza. <laughs> Science University was busy with uh, his present. <laughs> and, uh, so this was the agreement uh, from um, uh, our European consortium. And so this is important. So we, we need to return. I think, I think we need to return to this uh, to this uh, old times and to start again a new uh, a new consortium. And to, to push with this uh, school, you say you are in, uh, in master in uh, actual currently, yeah. So uh, why not to, to see also in, in PhD? 
and so we can, we can move on. So I know it was a, a busy stuff and because the European uh, uh, administration asked a lot of uh, administration administrative stuff with employment contract, so we can move with, uh, so this was with, with Nice University, so it was fantastic because everything was centralized in Nice University. So all the students at the end got the diploma from Nice University and the second diploma from the university where they were doing their PhD. So double diploma. So we can move. So this was a kind of uh, a PhD agreement. So the doctoral thesis chapter with, uh, uh, with, uh, with uh, President of Miss University, Remo, and the advisor, and so on. So the student were, we take care of all the students with very detail. So it was very important. This is important, not only scientifically, but for all, uh, for all steps. We can move. So also for insurance. Okay. And the last. Ah, no, it's, it was not the last. This was it because it was it's so always a computing. <laughs> To, to have uh, for any student in France, so you need bureaucratic papers. So this was a kind of bureaucratic papers from a um, uh, convention d'accueil for foreign students to, to be welcome for the three years in, uh, inside the European uh, uh, And now the last one, oh, no, it was not the last one. Yes, so this was all the different uh, PhD school organized. So you can see a lot. Maybe a lot of uh, PhD school. Uh, you see, technically, the, between two and three weeks. So, this was the, the core of the IRA PhD. So, I need, we need to, to return to this, uh, to this uh, beautiful idea. And uh, thank you very much. Thank you. So, thank you very much. Vous avez vu l'importance de l'histoire. Est-ce que vous, est-ce que vous avez conseillé les eh, Pierrel et Stecchio, Nathalie? Est-ce que vous avez déjà conseillé les Pirelli les Stecho? Raymond, nobody is paying attention to the uh, video that's being broadcast. They don't hear you. Thank you. 
Yes. Magnetizer can remember the code. Dynamics of charges particles in exact solution. Uh, Professor Karas, Vladimir Karas, are, are you connected? Yes, I am. Yes, yes, I see him here. Hello? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Okay. Okay. Vladimir, good to see you. Vladimir. Uh, nice to meet you. I am not sure if you can hear me. I can hear you very well. Yes. So can you can hear me? Uh, yes, very well. Good. Thank you for coming and giving a lecture. No, hello. And we are, we are now. Remo? Oui. And professor, and professor Karas, we are now online. Yes. And no. uh, there, is, there is a bit of background noise because the people from the are about to leave, but we would be really happy to talk about science with Professor Caras. So, are you online? Est-ce que, est que vous avez donné déjà les les, les Pirelli no. statues? Hello? No. Remo, can you hear me? Yes, but did you give already the Pirelli? No. No, 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 no. later at lunch break. So, because now we don't want Professor Caras to wait. But you have to see, you have to see at the Rampal the statues. He has seen the statues. Yes, yes, yes. They have done it. Yes, they have seen the statues of Pirelli. Rampal. Eh? You talk about who? Madame Rampal. Is she have seen the the statues of Pirelli? Pirelli statues to the people in Nice. Ah, this is Professor Caras. Okay, Vladimir. Uh, you can have, I start? Uh, yes. So we are sorry for the delay, which is uh, unfortunate. Uh, OK, Wait. that's perfect. I would like, first of all, uh, thank you very much for the invitation. Uh, my contribution will be uh, brief, but I would like to split it in two parts. Uh, the first part, obviously, is to uh, give uh, warm regards and uh, many greetings to Professor Ruffini on the occasion of uh, the birthday. Thank you very uh, much, Vladimir. And, and very nice memory of uh, our encounters at different uh, places uh, in Rome, in Pescara, uh, but also in Czech Republic. Uh, because I see that there are actually two parallel conferences, which is almost appropriate for the person in relativity. Let me uh, speak about 
uh, one topic uh, which uh, Professor Ruffini and, uh, and other colleagues started a uh, long time ago, and it was not, uh, I think, mentioned uh, during this uh, meeting uh, here in the morning. Uh, but uh, I think there is still a potential to develop it further. Uh, and that concerns the motion of uh, matter plus mind particles uh, around uh, black holes, uh, which uh, was introduced by Ruffini, Damur, Honey in the 1970s with the notion of plasma horizon. Uh, maybe many of them already uh, forgot about uh, their idea. Uh, but uh, there is a continuation of that uh, work in terms of uh, exact solutions of uh, magnetized black holes. So what I am showing uh, now here is the metric uh, which is, uh, as you recognize, uh, appropriate to Kerr uh, solution, uh, Kerr black hole, except uh, for the capital lambda term, uh, which comes from a generalized, magnetized, uh, Ernst uh, Wild uh, metric, and which uh, includes the effect of uh, electromagnetic field on the geometry. So for lambda equal one, it is exactly uh, Kerr uh, space time, Kerr black hole solution. Uh, but as uh, Garcia Diaz showed, uh, this lambda can be computed in terms of uh, Ernst potentials, phi and capital E, and uh, magnetic field intensity B0. And if B0 is uh, uh, non-negligible, uh, non the metric becomes asymptotically non-flat, because uh, the terms of phi and E uh, contain also radius. We know exact explicit form, which I am not showing here because uh, the equations are lengthy. <clears throat> but uh, I just remind you that we know the exact form of this electro vacuum solution. Now we can look to uh, the structure of a magnetic field in this magnetized uh, black hole solution. Uh, here I am showing two examples from our uh, work with uh, Wokrowlitsky a long time ago. Un super telephone uh, son en permanence. Oui, je suis là. Ah non, pas uh, votre téléphone, l'appareil. Uh, Professor Damour on different topics, but, uh, but this one uh, shows the field lines of magnetic field, roughly vertical. Uh, asymptotically mm -hmm. flat, uniform, uh, but uh, the space-time itself is not asymptotically flat. It is curved because of the effect of the magnetic field, which is not test field here. And there are also uh, two examples of electric field lines. Uh, uh, on the left, uh, the field lines uh, thread the horizon. On the right, which corresponds to non-magnetized solution. Uh, they are uh, incoming uh, along the equatorial plane and in outgoing uh, along the axis. Uh, and, and in total, uh, the charge of the black hole is zero. Uh, that corresponds to uh, walled uncharged uh, black hole with this uh, combination of E plus twice magnetic intensity mass of the black hole and spin equals zero. <clears throat> but, but now it is the exact solution. So this is just the linearized, linearized version of, of world solution. And now coming uh, to recall uh, Ruffini, Honey, uh, Damour, uh, plasma horizon, that is uh, supposed to be the region where hatched here. Uh, uh, the region where plasma cannot stay in equilibrium. And outside in the uh, white region, in principle, there could be stable uh, configurations of plasma. Uh, nowadays, in terms of uh, very advanced and uh, complicated numerical 
GRMHD uh, simulations. This might seem as uh, oversimplified uh, discussion, which obviously it is. Yes. But still, it gives us uh, some background understanding of what we see in numerical situation, where we can expect stable configuration and where we cannot. So uh, this plot, just in short, shows uh, three times three, nine different uh, parameter cases uh, with uh, different charge of the black hole in the center. Uh, and uh, without going to uh, much details, you see that the unstable regions obviously develop along the uh, rotation axis of the black hole. This is the quadrant of the horizon, uh, but also close to the horizon in the equatorial plane where the ergosphere is located. Uh, and uh, my almost last slide shows the corresponding magnetic field lines. Uh, on the left case, for one of the particle uh, combination of magnetic intensity and uh, spin uh, of the black hole, uh, the magnetic field lines thread the horizon and then charged particles, as far as they are attached to magnetic field lines, uh, either fall into the black hole or, or they can be ejected from uh, to further distance along uh, some kind of horizontal vertical jet. And there is a transition between uh, the part which uh, matter can be, and this is another uh, combination of parameters. Uh, so let me just uh, finish by reminding you to this old work of uh, Ruffini and collaborators in a uh, kind of new uh, twist uh, with exact solutions. The one which I was showing, uh, I remind you, is electrovacuum solution. So it is exact, but still it does not uh, include the effect of matter on the metric. The motion of matter is still treated as a uh, uh, test matter or test fluid. Uh, that would be probably for future work, but uh, I suspect that it's really already beyond the possibility of uh, exact analytical solution. And finally, let conclude once again with uh, warm wishes uh, and uh, greetings and a picture uh, taken from one of uh, Professor Rufini's visit to Czech Republic and his lecture uh, during a conference in Opava. As you might notice, uh, the room is uh, not very full, but you may also notice the date that was during uh, these difficult times of uh, pandemic where we had to uh, be uh, far away from each other and hardly could travel, but still uh, Remo Ruffini was very brave enough to visit the country and cross the border in those times. So uh, my best wishes, thank you for the invitation and hope to meet you soon again. Vladimir, thank you very much. I am very, I am very happy that you could come, and you you know how much I care about uh, all the countries that are participating around Opawa, and um, and uh, we follow very much your work also at the observatory. I hope very much that we can increase that we can increase uh, our uh, relation. And, uh, you know, my dream is always uh, to have more participation in ICRANET member states. Therefore, do your best. <laughs> Thank you so much. And let's keep going. Yes, uh, that is our are, plan. Thank you. We are in a turbulent phase in uh, relativistic astrophysics, very turbulent. And, um, I think you have read my 
con my some of my document which you keep for yourself because it's important but you have to be aware of the problems i have it thank you for sending and, and uh, i think we have to manage to to do something about because the the situation is uh, absolutely dramatic but but scientific but we have something very interesting that we are doing and we keep uh, i think this time is very very important result uh, as usual and we will keep you informed in the next days possibly tomorrow i will make in closure a consideration thank you Raymond. yes okay. thank you and i will follow the lectures in whatever part of the conference is available on zoom <laughs> okay thank you so much So now we give the award. Yes. Renaud, are you still online? Yes, of course. Okay, because now we are going to uh, give the awards. If the recipients are all there. Okay. Maybe I have the if i if i manage to find it there are okay i think the booklet is online uh, so where i would like to otherwise we show the booklet uh, well, maybe we put the camera on and we show it by the camera okay the camera is off yes why is it the camera no it's on the camera is on oh, i don't see it uh, why do you not see your screen uh, I can see. Uh, this yes, I feel it. <laughs> Yeah, because it's close to the is it really there? I can't be so I <laughs> so can uh, I will ask to the to the attendant the people can can you see well can you see well our our room here where we are going to deliver the uh, the awards yes Jorge we see you okay thank you okay so I, I put it okay you see we are here um <coughs> let me see if i can switch the oh here oh, we have, uh, okay well, okay i'm i'm taking so this is what they see huh? so we're opening the boxes yes yes we show uh, an example maybe maybe the um uh, Fred, I make some much. Oh, you, you come here? Oh, yeah, maybe. Uh, you see? Yes, come, come, come to where I am. Yeah, my place. Oh, yes. No, 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 no. Just keep the light on. You see? I scatter myself here. Oh, yes. No, it's okay. Sorry. Thank you. No, no, no. I can't. 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 I can't
As um, as um, you are too tall. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> only, only <laughs> So um, as um, was Bob Johnson uh, uh, recording this morning, and you remember how this uh, the the these uh, trajectories of the particles around the black hole became the symbol a logo figure. But, but not only that, because that uh, that became actually. Uh, this uh, this is sculpture uh, by by um, Italian artist uh, Pivelli. So um, I will oh I'm afraid that it will all here in this. This is the representation. Oh, thank you. Uh, so you can identify this. This is the the, the far particles going around a kind of black hole. Uh, and this is the representation by the artist that actually. Became the sculpture uh, is a symbol uh, of the master world, not only the symbol of the So, uh, this is uh, what uh, our distinguished uh, colleague will uh, receive today, and it's an honor and a pleasure for us to give you in your hands. So, uh, please, um, um, Professor. Um, so, first, I would try and like to say a few words just out of my because. Uh, this is a quite sudden moment. We are talking about science, about a nice culture. And it's also what uh, Rainbow did for all this world to try a very well Marcel Boltzmann meeting, which really are uh, important moments in uh, the whole of astrophysics, uh, astrophysics and uh, general relativity, to take to give this over to people who really did. Very important work in their fields. So I'm saying that with a solemnity because we are talking about science. So we are very happy to give these awards to a lot of people today. And so each of us is going to in charge of one of the awards. And I will start uh, with uh, the delivery of this award to Professor Piran. It's and, and that is a, a sentence which was written by Raymond himself. So, Professor Kiran, dear Zou, you are award, given this award for the following reason and many others. But this one is for extending relativistic astrophysics across international, a true companion in the search. For the deeper meaning of Einstein's theory of relativity. Sweet, thank you. Hello. <laughs> yes, Remo. Well, uh, yeah, we, can hear you. Okay, thank you. we finally manage. Ah. We finally managed. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. And now it's your turn. Uh, yes. Okay. So, good afternoon, everyone. Now it's my turn and it's my pleasure to read the second award, which is for the Space Research Institute Iki of the Russian Academy of Sciences, presented by Professor Rashid Sunyaev. So I will read what was officially written in our, uh, our ceremony, so it will be nice to follow. Space Research Institute E.E. of the Russian Academy of Sciences was responsible for developing the overall concept and scientific program of as SRG Orbital Observatory and played a leading role in developing the RXTX uh, S telescope and the entire SRG Observatory as part of the Russian Space Science Program carried out by the Roscosmos Corporation in the interest of the Russian Academy of Sciences. So this is really a pleasure to award this to Iki, which was this and was one of the biggest institutes in the Soviet Union and in current Russia. And it's our pleasure to pass this award to Professor Rashid Sinai, that is the PI of the collaboration, which has played a really crucial role of developing all the telescopes among the many beautiful things in the science that we are enjoying now. The professor is busy, but I work for you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
Now, it's <laughs> okay. the okay. everything okay. Okay. Right. Uh, yeah. Yes, uh, Remo, many thanks. Pity that you are not helping Dr. Sarkian <laughs> to uh, provide me this. But in any case, we are great. We are happy to congratulate you again with your happy birthday. And thank you all for, for this uh, medal. Yes. So thank you. Uh, my turn now. Uh, well, this is part of the um, institutional awards. Okay. Uh, so for the creation of the world's next X ray map um, of the entire sky, for the discovery of millions of previously unknown accreting supermassive black holes of cosmological direction. For the detection of X rays from tens of thousands to galaxy clusters, filled mainly with dark matter and for permitting the detailed investigation of the growth of the large scale structure of the universe during the era of dark energy dominance. So it goes to Max Planck Institute for Extraterrestrial Physics and is presented here to Professor Peter Predel, principal investigator of Yerosita. Thank you very much to you for this uh, 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 award, and I wish you a yeah, nice birthday. It's so probably today, and not the right word. Get well soon, please. Thank I'm you. Sure very much. I will be there tomorrow. So now we are delivering the fourth open to uh, Professor uh, Lavoshkin, uh, the Lavoshkin Association. And um, so the Lavoshkin Association created the Navigator Space Platform uh, carrying the German Yugosita and Russian RCR XC X Organize the launch of SRG orbital X ray observatory to the second Lagrangian point of the Sun Earth system at a distance of, of 1.5 million kilometers from the Earth and, and manage the observatory flight and the daily reception of the scientific data on Earth for 20, uh, 23 and a half months. So we heard about all these achievements in the talks yesterday. Dr. Alexander Shirshakov, Director General of the S.A. Lavoshkin Association, he specializes in design, manufacture, testing, launch, and control of SC for scientific purposes. Among those SC launched, there are the Radio Storm Astrophysical Observatory and the SPECT RG, yes, so slide, Space Observatory, while the planned SC launches. Uh, Luna 25 and ExoMars. Dr. Shevchakov started his career in 73 working as an engineer of the State University Enterprise NGO named S.A. Lavoshki in Russia, Federation. Starting from 89, he has played multiple roles with the Lavoshki Association, being appointed head of the group, head of the sector, head of the department. Deputy Head of the Complex, Head of the Branch, Director of the Center, Deputy Head of the Design Bureau, Deputy General Designer, and Deputy General Director. Dr. Shishakov is an editorial board member of the reviewed edition of Best Week of Lavoshki Association. Since uh, 17, 2017, he's also a member of the General Designer Council. He has been awarded Honor Mechanical Engineer of the Russian Federation as well as agency level award of the Russian Federal Space Agency. So congratulations to Dr. Shimshakov. Association. And the, and the association. And this uh, award is uh, given. No. no, just a moment, just a moment. Uh, 
Si le donner à Pascal qui l'amène à Moscou. So we, we are, we, yes, in fact, we, we show it to Rashid. Uh, Rashid can perhaps not carry two hours. Huh? And, and in fact, it's a, uh, Pascal Chardonnay who can give it in proper hands because it's going to Russia in a, uh, very, uh, very soon. As a, the attaché at the French embassy, the scientific attaché of the French embassy in Moscow. So, since uh, both, both uh, of them became the and, 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 yeah. and uh, Pascal Chardonnay will certainly organize a very nice reception at the French embassy in, uh, in Russia to deliver this award. To deliver this award. Okay. 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 So thank you very much. Okay. But I have to so we thank you everybody we thank everybody or so people who gave the talks this morning on various subjects of the military and i think it's now time for that and the afternoon session starts when at, uh, at, three, at three. three. And the afternoon session starts at three. Thank you very much. Et à quelle heure? On commence à trois heures, Raymond. Je vous invite la, la tarte, la tourte ou pas? Ah, si on a le gâteau, on te la porte. Pardon? If we have the cake, we will bring it to you. Non, 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 c'est pour vous. So we, Professor, don't worry, they are going to take the cake. So now they are on the way to take the cake. Yes. Okay, yes. tell uh, Pascal and everybody to wait yes. for that. Yes, 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 yes. We, we are here. We are, we are waiting for the cake. The cake. Oh, there is a cake. Yes, there is a cake. So. And there is a photo. Yes. <laughs> Everyone is here, Professor. So we are waiting. Today. Okay. Hello, is anyone there? Yeah. Yes, I was asked to chair the session of from 1 to 3 p.m. List the first person is Simonetta. Professor Simonetta, I don't know if you want to give a talk because it's written TBD. This is written TBD uh, just because we didn't receive the title for abstract. Um, okay, it's just the title TBD. <laughs> okay, I am here. Uh, if you want, I, yeah. I can do some... Uh, I don't know if uh, now is the time or not. I think, I think now is the time because the meeting should have started at 1 p.m. <laughs> now is uh, nine minutes past. So, so shall we start? Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Everybody else is at lunch. In, in, hi. Hi. Hi, Bob. Hi, Bob. How are you? I'm good. Unfortunately, the IT staff is not in Nice, and so nobody's in charge of the YouTube uh, live show or this Zoom session. Hi, Bob. Bob, the conference is broadcasted on YouTube. Yes. During lunch break. So, and also this conversation here on Zoom will be recorded. So, who's, who's in charge of the Zoom session? And our system manager from here. Ah. 
Okay. Good luck. So, can I start? Uh, I don't know. Secretar secretaries, can we yes. can we start? Yes, you can start. Yeah. Uh, Professor Ruffini is not here. Maybe oh, not. We wait? Uh, because we only have two speakers from one, two, three. I think we have enough time. Yes, you have time. Yeah. There are only two talks now until three. Okay. I share my screen mm -hmm. if you want. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Mm, it's okay. Could you see? Yeah, I can see it clearly. Okay. My my talk really is an overview about my experience with Remo uh, from uh, uh, 1985 after my uh, graduation in Sapienza. So um, the title of this talk is Astrophysics, Galaxies, Experiences and Opportunities that I had and that I have uh, now with a uh, the closeness with the Remo. Uh, so uh, just to uh, mention uh, international experience uh, after my um, studies in Sapienza, uh, Remo decided to uh, send me in uh, the Harvard Smithsonian Observatory in Boston uh, there I had a, an experience very, very useful for me in uh, learn uh, about uh, uh, galaxies, about uh, equilibrium and stability of galaxies. And uh, also an, an other experience that uh, uh, was uh, very, very impressive for me is the experience in Stanford University uh, where I passed um, uh, several months, and especially the collaboration with the Gravity Probe B experiment and launch in NASA. Uh, there, uh, I, I learned um, the um, uh, frontiers of uh, uh, general relativity, and uh, this experiment was very, very uh, in basic for my, my uh, experience and my uh, experience in physics. Uh, so uh, there's a brief consideration for this amazing uh, day of uh, uh, birthday, of Remo birthday, uh, start from a sincere uh, thanks to Remo for many, many years of uh, scientific interaction and uh, experience. So uh, the international uh, travels and the congresses uh, of the Marcel Grossman meetings uh, from uh, Rome to Australia in 1988 and Japan, in Kyoto, Stanford, Jerusalem, and so on, Berlin, Paris, Stockholm. So uh, all these uh, congresses uh, has been the occasion to meet many, many uh, greatest scientists uh, that uh, uh, has been a reference for me, have been. Uh, okay. So uh, just to mention a uh, few and uh, important scientific uh, uh, collaboration uh, and supervision at first of Remo. Um, so the 
structure and morphology of galaxies, and uh, particularly the study of uh, equilibrium and the stability of uh, elliptical galaxies, uh, has been uh, a line uh, of uh, research in the years that has been have been uh, uh, really uh, basic uh, basic uh, for me basic in the sense in the sense of uh, uh, fundamental uh, of my uh, scientific career. These are just to to uh, see the scientific publications from the beginning in nineteen. 86 uh, uh, to uh, 2002, uh, 22, uh, and uh, so on. Um, numerous papers uh, about the uh, scientific uh, topic. Um, next, uh, the work uh, with uh, Remo and uh, Christian Cherubini about uh, uh, general relativity topics that I don't mention here, up to, uh, up to the new scientific field of uh, um, interdisciplinary complex systems at uh, my university now, uh, Campus Biomedico University in Rome. Uh, thanks uh, uh, to the uh, Remo inspiration, for new application of theoretical physics out of the traditional uh, fields uh, of uh, um, relativity uh, and uh, uh, basic physics. Here, um, Remo encouraged me to start this uh, uh, new field, a new line of uh, interdisciplinary complex systems. And uh, there in the, uh, this university, I uh, started uh, uh, with a new uh, research group. So thank you for the vision, for the Remo vision that uh, uh, he has uh, transmitted to me and uh, that has allowed me to open a new research field. I have now a fantastic group of scientists collaborating with me just to see. Uh, this is the uh, website of my group. Or this is my team now. Uh, and uh, we have uh, many uh, research line uh, and many uh, research uh, uh, overview, for instance, uh, uh, biophysical modeling, material science modeling, astrophysics uh, now. And uh, I, I finish with, a, with a, an happy birthday to Remo and uh, thanks uh, for the most impressive and disruptive vision of science that uh, he transmitted to me. And uh, uh, I am very, very grateful for, for that. Thank you, I, I uh, finished. Okay, Professor Simonetta, I'm, I saw that uh, you are working on biophysics and astrophysics and many topics. Yeah. Before us, there is something in the sky and something on the earth. So yeah. what are the connections between them? Okay, look, um, there is a, a strange and uh, impressive connection. Uh, at first, for the methods, the mathematical methods in astrophysics, for instance, um, fluid dynamics uh, and the uh, uh, main uh, equations that uh, mm -hmm in the, the classical astrophysics, uh, obviously, uh, you can use. Uh, it could be used also in biophysics. Uh, for instance, in the uh, cardiac activity, the cardiac activity is a research line of mine. The cardiac activity presents uh, the 
uh, electro electromagnetic signals that mm -hmm. could be detected in, with uh, instruments, uh, special instruments, uh, could be detected. And uh, the electro electrical activity, the action potential, the electrical potential that propagates in the heart um, has an activity like a spiral. Uh, and a spiral activity that could be um, compared with a, a topology of a spiral galaxies. Clearly is a different phenomenon, but uh, the description and in the same, in the same sense, uh, the mathematical tools could be used in the both uh, fields. I see. Another interesting uh, method, method is the network and mathematics of networks. The, uh, you could be, uh, uh, you could have, um, for instance, uh, uh, galaxies network, mm -hmm. and the galaxies distribution, and also cells distribution in uh, our a body or our tissues and the cells distribution uh, is uh, could be described by networks by nodes that interact interact uh, they, uh, could have an interaction I see. so this is a very very interesting uh, parallelism mm. yeah. i remember once i talked with professor ruffini because he has a supervisor, Jordan. Jordan also worked on the biophysics. Oh, so, okay. yeah. yeah. And then Professor Ruffini, he asked, uh, like, uh, our DNA has is spinning, is spin, like the. Yeah. Is this from. Analyx. Yeah. yeah. Is its origin is from the universe or not in your mind? <laughs> oh, I don't know. The uh, topologies, the topologies of our uh, basic uh, mechanisms are uh, very interesting because something of uh, energetic phenomena mm -hmm. uh, may be at the beginning of our uh, uh, of the life processes. Uh -huh. uh, aggregation, the molecular aggregations, and also the molecular organization for the, uh, the DNA structure, for instance, mm -hmm. uh, could have required uh, some uh, most energetic phenomena in, in the universe, clearly. Yeah, I see. So, I don't know. This is a <laughs> frontier, you know. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's very interesting. Okay, yeah. I have finished my question. Anyone? Anyone has a question? Or some comments? Okay, so let's send to Professor Simonetta Filippi. Okay, thank you. Okay, okay we we'll go to the next speak. I think from Iran, Sarah. Yes, Dr. Sarah, are you there? Sarah, let me see. Uh, hello, I'm here. Can you hear okay, me? Okay. Yes, Sarah, you can start your talk now. Okay, uh, but I can't uh, turn on my camera because the net here is not so strong. I just can have the idea. Okay, Sorry okay. for that. Yeah, it's that's enough. So because the VPN, uh, we are connecting with a VPN and we can't turn on my camera here. Oh, I see. I okay. see. Okay. You may share your screen, yes? We can see your slides. Yes, yes, I will do it. Okay, okay, we, we can see it. Well, uh, hello everybody. Um, thank you for being invited uh, for this talk. Uh, my name is Sara Sagafi. I'm postdoc researcher in black hole physics under the supervision of Professor Nozali from University of Mazandaran. 
Okay, recently uh, we've been working on a project uh, called the shadow behavior uh, of extra dimensional charged black hole in Einstein Hondra skin Maxwell theory. Uh, I will have a short introduction and then uh, review the null Josic procedure, how to find the shadow behavior. And then uh, I will end with some conclusion. Uh, okay, uh, we all knew that uh, due to extreme gravitational field of black holes, uh, light rays passing near them are strongly deflected, um, causing a bright um, a circular area around the central dark region. And uh, this dark region is called the black hole shadow. Uh, whose size and shape depend on the black hole's mass and angular momentum. The black hole shadow images from the supermassive black hole in the center of our galaxy uh, and uh, the galaxy M87, uh, detected by the Event Horizon Telescope, have greatly um, you know, stimulated our interest uh, in black hole physics, and um, it promotes the research of black hole shadow. And till now, uh, the shadow behavior of various black hole solutions uh, have been analyzed extensively uh, in syrup GR and in uh, modified um, gravity series. Uh, you know that uh, in modifying GR, uh, the scalar fields uh, have a crucial role. Uh, I should mention that uh, Horndesk proposed the most general scalar tensor modified gravity action. Uh, which generates the equation of motion uh, with second order derivative. And the initial Hondoski scalar tensor modified gravity theory uh, has uh, been investigated in astrophysics and cosmology. And in the case of a locally stable solution uh, of Einstein Hondoski black holes, spherically symmetric and static solution was obtained. I think for the case of a vanishing cosmological constant and also for the case of a negative cosmological constant. Uh, but recently, um, the einstein hondrowski maxwell theory is constructed by minimally coupling the einstein hondrowski gravity to a Maxwell field. And uh, um, the asymptotical locally flat charge black hole solution in einstein hondrowski maxwell gravity with four dimension and also with uh, extra dimension were obtained. Uh, you know, extra dimensions uh, arose from the string theory predictions and the ADS safety correspondence uh, and causing interest in higher dimensional black holes. Also, tri electron world scale gravity uh, shows us that the production of higher dimensional black hole in future experiments of uh, large hardon collider at CERN is possible. Uh, these facts motivated us to um, do this project and to investigate the shadow behavior uh, of the asymptotic flat charge black hole solution in einstein hondrowski maxwell gravity in arbitrary dimensions. And by doing so, uh, we are hopeful, maybe in future, this may be possible to test the Mm, this theory, I mean, the einstein androsky maxwell theory and the possibility of its scalar hairy black hole solutions through observation of black hole shadow. Uh, and now about Noljozik's structure, you know, for understanding and um, determining the shadow behavior of black hole, the first step is to find and calculate the Noljozik of black hole. Uh, okay, this charged black hole in um, einstein hondrowski maxwell theory with extra dimension is given with this metric. You see here, here F and H are defined like this, and D is the dimension of the space-time. Q and mu uh, can parameterize the, ma uh, the mass and charge of the black hole. Uh, okay, and... Um, now by this line element, uh, for calculating the null geodesic, the Lagrangian of photons uh, should be written and uh, like this, and then uh, we can uh, compute the canonical conjugate momentum to these forms, as you see here. And because we have D dimension, and uh, so we have the hypersphere, 
we have the p theta i and p theta d minus two as uh, you see here. Uh, then we use the separation method for the action of photons. Here m is the mass of test particle. Uh, the test particle here is the photon and with zero mass. So the first term here is zero. And uh, then by using the hamilton jacobi equation and the Carter method, uh, we can find the null Josic around this uh, higher dimensional charged black hole. Uh, now we can determine the boundary of shadow by using the null circular orbits. Uh, this can be defined uh, by the effective potential. Here, uh, K is the Carter constant, and E is the energy of the photon, which having a circular orbit around the black hole. Uh, and L is the angular momentum. Okay, now after uh, you know mm, calculating the null Josic and null circular orbits, uh, we can say that these null circular orbits are unstable where the um, effective potential is maximum, uh, which happens at uh, R, which happens at R zero, as you see here. And uh, this is the uh, radius of the photonosphere. And this is where the effective potential is maximum and the photon orbits are circular and unstable. Uh, to be more peers, this is where uh, this is the sphere that is filled with circular null geodesics that are unstable uh, respect to radial perturbation, as you can see in the picture. Uh, okay, now we can come to the shadow behavior. And for the investigating the shadow, uh, we um, can define two impact parameters as Cassie and Eta. And uh, with, two, with these two impact parameters and the null geodesics in previous slides that I told you, uh, we have this equation. Uh, this is a physical parameter. And now uh, for different values of Q and D, uh, we can uh, estimate uh, the, this parameter and the photonosphere radius uh, for this higher dimensional charge black hole. And we see that uh, by increasing the dimension, uh, the value of the photonosphere radius is decreasing, except for the cases uh, with uh, more than eight dimension. And uh, also by decreasing the by increasing the Q, I mean the charge in the Maxwell theory, uh, the the photonosphere radius is uh, decreasing. Now for um, characterizing the geometrical shape of the shadow um, on the observer's frame, we use the celestial coordinate, uh, which um, is exactly dependent on the observer's uh, location and uh, are defined as uh, alpha and beta. And uh, this is our O, which is the distant, um, distance of the observer to the black hole. And in this picture, uh, it is shown that um, this exactly, uh, I mean, the O is this, and theta is the angle between the observers and the z-axis of black hole. The source here is a light source, and uh, which emits light, and this light passing uh, near a black hole and is deflected, and causing a bright circular area around the central dark region, which is the shadow. And now uh, on the equatorial plane, uh, Alpha and beta are defined by the, uh, in the two impact parameters that I told you in the previous slide. Uh, and it is obvious that this uh, equation is the shadow, uh, is the radius of the shadow. Uh, and now uh, we just uh, plotted the figure. I mean, the shape of the shadow, because the black hole is not rotating, the shape is, uh, is like a circle. But if it was uh, a rotating black hole, uh, the shape would deviate from being a circle. And uh, we can see that uh, we plotted uh, for fixed Q. And it, in each plot, uh, by increasing the dimension, uh, the shadow radius is increasing uh, the 
black uh, circle here is for d equals four and increasing the dimension uh, will uh, result in uh, decreasing the shadow radius. But except for the cases uh, that uh, have more than eight dimensions. And uh, we see that when we increase the Q, uh, all the, sh I mean, the shapes are uh, approaching each other more and more. Sorry. And uh, in the last slide, I just plotted the, the shadow behavior, I mean, the shape of the shadow. Uh, we fixed the uh, dimension and in each plot, uh, increase the charge. And uh, we see that by increasing the charge, the shadow size is decreasing. And with more dimension, all of them are approaching each other. Well, we can uh, conclude that uh, we investigate uh, the shadow behavior of the asymptotically flat charge black hole solution in einstein hondrowski maxwell gravity in uh, arbitrary dimension. And uh, we see that the extra dimension affect the shadow size in addition to the source mass and electric charge. And uh, for fixed values of electric charge, the shadow size decreases in higher dimension except for d greater than eight. And we observe that for more values of charge, um, shadow radius for d equals four and d equals 11 approach each other. It was clear in the plot. And on the other hand, for fixed dimensions, uh, increasing the electric, the electric charge uh, will result in decreasing the shadow radius of the black hole. And we hope that this study, maybe in future, uh, could be the possibility for testing this theory uh, and it's uh, black hole solutions with the astrophysical observation. And thanks for your attention. Thank you, Sarah. Welcome. Any question or comments? Could I ask a question? Sure. Yes. Uh, I'm Alexander Zakharov. First, uh, uh, I have two remarks and also, uh, let us say, one question. First, mm -hmm. about your definition of shadow, it was probably first or second slide or third. Oh, it's fourth okay. slide. Please show fourth. it. Fourth, uh, okay. Yes, it's a, you, sorry, but your definition is completely wrong because it's bright circular area is not shadow. Shadow, it's no, no, absolutely I said darkness. That, uh, no, no, yes, wait, I said wait, that the dark... wait, 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 okay. wait. First, my, my remark and second, your response. And so, because it's absolute darkness, but brightness could help us to describe and to, to, to describe shape of shadow. So, but bright area is not shadow. Yeah, so I said wrong. that. Yeah, I said that the, the bright area, which is uh, the boundary of the dark area. I mean, no, the no, dark no. area it's, is the it's shadow. Written here. It's written here. You're on, you're, it's written here. So it's, I'm telling you, that is wrong. So second, so that is, uh, dependence of I size of shadow for reisner nurstrom metric was investigated in our paper 17 years ago. And we showed, and moreover, there is analytical expression of size of shadow as a function of charge. Really, if your ch uh, charge is increasing, so in this case, sh shadow size is decreasing. So yes, it's, 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 <laughs> it was shown 17 years ago, I'm repeating it. So yeah, second, well, second remarkable uh, remark. Theory. Wait, wait, wait. Please tell. Uh, let me let me say, and after that we will reply. So and after that, I would like to say tell you, say you, instead of uh, taking into account uh, rotation, you said let us consider Kardetsky extra dimension and charge. All uh, practically uh, all these argument, all these assumptions are not well established. So it's, I mean, why, what, what could you tell us reason to, con to consider Kardetsky extra dimension or charge? Do you expect to explain some features of shadow with these, uh, let us say, extra parameters? It's rather doubtful. Uh, okay. Thank you. You know, uh, we just calculate and, uh, you know, we want to, uh, understand the shadow behavior of black holes in um, this special theory. I mean, the Einstein-Hondrowski-Maxwell theory. 
and uh, we want to show uh, we want to know what is the effect of the higher dimension on this shadow you know and this is just a theoretical work yeah, I, I like understand. others i understand but okay. if there is a, some un, un, unexpected or un, uh, don't, uh, un, not explained features of shadow in this case you are introducing extra parameters but at the moment i do not see any features of shadow which are needed uh, so um, let us say assumption of hardetsky or extra dimension or the charge uh, moreover it's very hard to to imagine uh, charged black holes significantly charged black holes in astrophysics if you are speaking about astrophysics um, okay thanks for your comment thank you Okay, any other questions? Okay, if no, if no more questions, let's close the session. Let's send to Sarah first and uh, close the session of, I think this is the first uh, early afternoon session, yes? And we will have another one starting from 3 p.m. Okay. So thanks everyone. Okay, I think now we are closing this morning or this afternoon session, the early afternoon session, and we will have one at 3 p.m. So thank you everyone. <laughs>